Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Aegis Protector League. I'm Volt. I'm here with Orion. First of all, Orion, how are you doing? You know, you're going to jump straight into the action, so just wanted to get your take on. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I got to spend some time with the family before this, but overall, uh, excited to see some, you know, hopefully some quality League of Legends. We just got done seeing DePaul uh, University on our last stream, so hopefully we'll be able to see uh, them uh, pull out another dub, because they got the, the win in our previous week against Korean Queens uh, Club, I would say. Um, but overall, um, definitely a match to really look forward to, even though it is yeah. two teams that are in the lower parts of the standings. Both these teams are basically fighting for their secured place mm -hmm. going into playoffs, whereas obviously we only have two weeks left. And we're basically banking on the fact that both these teams are playing against opponents that are higher up in the standings. So they really mm -hmm. need this win in order to really feel good about their position going into playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. Well, their current position is that both of them are situated in that one and four record. So a win does actually break the tie for that sixth spot and it pushes the other team for the seventh spot. I feel like Mint Mongoose as well, they would probably feel like they also need that win. But as you said, like for the Academy team, you know, they're coming off a good win. Of course, they're probably not going to be the bottom place. But a win here is pretty much paramount because as he said, like the top four teams seems that they're all logged. They're all... Like, really competing at a bit of a different caliber compared to these teams that didn't really click as for the split and didn't really develop as some of the other teams has. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, when going into playoffs, it doesn't really matter if, you, if you're first place or last place. Each and every opponent has uh, an opportunity to do really well in the playoffs. So, um, at this point, uh, for both these teams, we're, we're really waiting for... Um, you know, to really just make their way into the playoffs so that they have an equal opportunity chance to really get things going. As we are starting drafts for both these teams, we do see Mint Mongoose go ahead and bending away the Talon away from Hot Master. I don't think he's probably going to ever get that champ. It's his main champ in solo queue, so I'm not surprised to see that one banned away. And we're also seeing Zeri kind of slowly creep her way back into the meta, unfortunately. Um, the champion's kind of annoying, but that's just my opinion. But, um... Yeah, yeah so far, not, I mean, not just kind of like Zeri's really annoying when she gets going. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess more or less it's just like anytime this champion's in the meta, you kind of have to have certain champions in the game mm. that just really warp the dynamic of the game. So yeah. it's always uh, super fun to deal with. Yeah, and well, speaking of the dynamic that's being warped right here, we're also seeing a focus on the assassins for the side of Mince Mongols. Not just the Talon, yeah. but also the Nefiri. Same archetype, same ready approach to the game. So it didn't really make a whole lot of difference if he's going to go for either of these two picks. The Virus, however, is back to that focus of AD carries. Now we have the main two that were in play. One of them was Smolder that just got banned, and the other one is Senna, who is still available for B1. Yeah, I mean, 380 carry bans, I would say they're towards the top of the tier list in the Vera, Smolder, this area. Not super common, I would say. I think uh, Sinus still is fairly strong. I would say there's still other AD carries that can still kind of fit the mold. I don't think Sin is necessarily like super um, pick worthy, I would say, at the very moments where she's just going to dominate and take over the game. Like Ash is still a good option if you want like a ADC or a support in, in your um, current versatile option. So she kind of still fits both of those niches. Um, I mean, I'm surprised. Obviously, like we're still not seeing a couple of the other strong picks that are currently available. Like Fall Bear is still good, Maokai is still good, Kai's is a really good champion right now. Um, that I believe both these teams prioritize quite a lot. Uh, I believe Kaisa was one of the main reasons that DePaul University Academy was actually able to pick up their win over Korean Queens clubs. So um, not surprised that they're going back onto it a little bit more of comfort, a little more of trying to play a similar style that they were able to pick up their first win last week. Yeah, and you know, like, Ash has the versatility in the terms that she can actually flex between support and bot. I feel like Kaisa does have some of that in her own merit, in her own kit. Because you can go for the on hit, you can go for the crit build. Most people usually go for either the hybrid build, that you get all three evolutions, or... Some salesman uh, that shall not be named has been repopularizing the AP build. And honestly, against teams that suffer at, like, closing down a distance, that's gonna work well. But with that recon, seems like it's going to be more brawly nature from DePaul. Yeah, it just certainly can be. I, I think the AP Kaisa build can are pretty much work on a lot of different facets mm -hmm. where it is very burst heavy, but also just even if, if you wanted to deviate into an Eclipse and then go mm -hmm. more for the AP bursty build, you still can be very combat based as well yeah. as being poke oriented. Um, but uh, for Mint Mongoose here, they have gone for the Lilia in the jungle, most likely, and pairing the Ash alongside of the Pike. So getting getting rid of their support flexibility, I would say, and just picking up the 
um, the bot lane straight away. Most likely because they saw the Rakan, they're like, okay, like we know exactly what their bot lane is. We feel comfortable picking the pike into it. Uh, and they also, uh, DePaul able to pick up probably one of the best, if not the best mid laner on the patch in the Ari. I really like this champion right now. I think her overall damage with Malignance, plus like even, even items like Lich Bane really makes her uh, trading patterns really, really good um, for this champion. And I think it follows up really well with what Rakan wants to do. Very simple play style to match with and in my opinion, fairly easy to execute upon. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it, it does actually pay dividends to the way that most mid laners are playing the game. Like you don't really look for the carry mid lanes anymore. We're not really in the age of the core keys or all these hyperscalers. You see a lot of Azirs, you oh. see a lot of the buys as well, because they also work with that Ari and suddenly that Ash can be an easy target for the Paul. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I really like this fight take care of you. you got, even like champion like Lilia and Ash, like Ash is fairly immobile. Lilia, even though she has a lot of movement speed, if she gets point and click CC, she's very easy to track down and get on top of. And for DePaul's, for DePaul's composition, they're basically just looking to get on top of as many members as they possibly can, make his, and basically bursting out that opponent. And really, if you look at Mint Mongoose's side, the only person that can really survive an engage like that is probably going to be the follow brother they picked for um i guess i technically a flex pick with the lilia and the volley bear lilia most likely going to be jungling volley bear most yeah. likely going into the top lane but still could theoretically go into either position here for these for their options um but right now we're waiting on this last pick here for depaul i'd imagine it's gonna be something very similar to what they've been going for it, it is going to be this maokai pick coming through it, it's another engage option for them another way to get on top of people so as long as depaul is actually able to get on top of uh, Mint Mongoose's team here uh, early in, in, in a lot of these fights. They will have a lot of success, but they are fairly short range. So if they are able to, you know, if, if Oriana and even the Ash are able to kite back, get get some distance, Mint Mongoose can still win out on some of these team fights. Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely agree. But I also look at this and I have to just point out that point that I look at a Lilia, I look at a Pike, even the Volibear really some ball delivery, some capability to team fight, but it's nowhere as easy as the Paul Academy. They're like Rakan, Ari, yeah. Vi, Maokai, all these are big go button in these ultimates. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and anytime you're um, looking at these compositions, you always want to see like the ability to start fights. You also want to see um, just kind of easiness of execution. And uh, mm -hmm. anytime, like obviously, like I think in terms of the lanes, I would actually give most of the lane advantages just outright to actually Mint Mongoose. I think. Ash Pike can be very aggressive. Oriana can have push into Ari, and Volley Bear should actually be able to beat up on the Maokai. So if they're able to get those lane advantages and be able to uh, transpire those leads into the mid and late game, I think Mint Mongoose can can just kind of win the game outright by kind of smacking them with their wallets. But if it ever becomes a straight up five on five team fight where the goal lead is very even and we're coming, we're all going from the same avenue. I really like the Paul's composition. Yeah, and for, for me, it's really just about the kind of gameplay that you want to get, because if Mint Mongoose are actually able to get that 4-1 or to just get the Lydia to accelerate Bass Divide, then suddenly you're in a good spot, because you have a lot of champions, as he said, that do win out of the lane, that they'll have a lot of priority, and that can translate into Grubs on the top side, can translate into Dragons, probably a Herald, and then maybe with an evolved mass state where you take down the mid-tier one, you take down one of the side lane tier ones, and suddenly the potential for a crystal arrow or a pike roam to actually get a pick that your team is built for is much easier but it's already on that basis can you actually get a lead in the first 15 minutes yeah exactly and it's, it's one of the um I, I guess like the downsides of picking a composition like this where like you do have very strong lanes but if you end up falling behind in any of your lanes the game becomes very much harder to play because your team fight execution just becomes a little bit harder to manage uh, as the game does progress. So I think the game, the, the onus on the game definitely is kind of in Mint's hands, where I do think they can accelerate the pace of the game early on with the Lilia, with the Pike, uh, and even like with, with Volley Bear, like kind of make, potentially making some roam plays with his ultimates turning off the towers. Um, whereas I they think they can make a lot of those individual plays, uh, but yeah. if those plays fall apart or if they just don't get ahead in the early game, I think their composition could definitely struggle as the game does go on. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking at these two comps and as he said, like, good potential to scale from the Paul Academy, but also good potential to snowball from Memmongus. So this is basically what we have on that setup. So the real question has to be then, which one of these two teams 
Especially in like the bot lane, because I like, look at the top lane, I think it's gonna be a beat down, but I don't think the Maokai is gonna struggle too hard. Like it should be a fairly isolated matchup. I look at the Lilia, I look at the Vi, and I think in a 3v3, the Vi is probably more valuable. To, so these dragon skirmishes are something that are very interesting to me, Orion. So how do you really break it down? Who should be in the pit first? Who should be really trying to fight back? When are you given dragons and when are you trying to contest for them? Yeah, I think for especially for DePaul's composition, the more uh, stru not structures, the more objectives they're able to take on the map and basically force Mint Mongoose's team into these team fight opportunities. I think that's where they're going to have a lot of their success. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I think if you are Mint Mongoose, you're fairly okay with not being at objectives first. Like you can you can face check with like. Holy Bear, Lilia Ball, uh, even like the Ash Hawk Shot, where like as long as you're able to see the engage coming for you, as long as you end up surviving that initial engage, DePaul University's Academy's uh, composition can run out of gas if they use all of their abilities from up front when the fight starts yeah. initially. So, I mean, you can say that, but I also look at the side of Mem Mongoose and I think, okay, once you don't have the sleep, once you don't have the shockwave, you're basically trying to kite. But in that aspect, I'm trying to figure the breakpoint. Like, when are the cooldowns low enough on the side of the Paul Academy that they don't really care about being kited and they can just layer that crowd control? And a, a part of me feels that it should never reach to that point if you're Mem Mongoose. If you're actually able to avert that initial engagement, I think that things should be easy for them. But might there be a universe where the Paul actually fail? To capitalize on that recon engage and then the follow-up is enough for them to win yeah i mean it's, it's always a possibility when it, when it when it comes down to execution right i think in terms of like obviously the point and click abilities from the vi from the maokai can very easily be successful especially when recon is able to connect with those engages um but i mean any, i mean all, there's always the possibility of being people being disconnected not quite being uh on the same page when you do go for these engages so that always is a possibility yeah, and well, I mean, from here, we've talked about the comms themselves pretty much. So just want to take here for your take. Who are the players, not the, not the champions, the players that should make a difference in this game? Um, I, I would say in particular, uh, I, I would say um, Mofus Seeker, I think, should be the one to really kind of facilitate the pace of the game. Because, I mean, in terms of like obviously looking at both these teams, like, he is the player that outranks his opponent in the support position by quite a lot. Um, so if he is able to uh, make a difference in this game and be the benefactor for his team to make a lot of plays, um, I do think that the gold lead that they can be able to produce in the early stages of the game can be a big difference. Yeah, difference that I feel like they will most definitely need. And from that part, really, like the bit of a final discussion that we can have about the comms has to be, well, where do you go? Like, if you're the junglers, do you actually hover towards bot? If it's level six, do you go to the Volibear and try to orchestrate a dive, or is that Maokai too tanky and you just leave loose in peace to basically play in peace in that? No, I think they have a lot of options for both these teams, really. I think it really depends on uh, what type of setup you have and what type of ability you're able to CC with them, right? I think overall, I would say, um, both, both these teams have a lot of a lot of options. They have a lot of abilities that they can use at, at their palm of their hands. It really depends on who has flash, who doesn't have the abilities to actually escape and punishing those cooldowns. Yeah, well, cooldowns it is, and we're pretty much almost loaded into the game, so it's gonna be a pretty intriguing one. And for the final part, I just wanna like give it a bit of spice. So this off this draft, who do you think will win? Uh, I, I would say, um, I, I think in terms of the ability to win, I would definitely get to suit DePaul University Academy, but at the same time, I think, um, if the, if Mint Mongoose is able to accelerate the pace of the game early on and make a lot of plays and build up the gold leads from their individual lanes, I can really see them winning this game. But if it's an, if it's an even game, yeah. I, I would give it to DePaul. Okay, so it seems that you're basically going for the ease of execution and you think that's the oh. end all be all that thing. Yeah, it is my opinion, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, that sounds pretty good. So you might as well just hit a brief break, you know, let the game load and then we'll be right back with you when we are on the rift. See you soon.
Okay, and we are back and on the rift, ladies and gentlemen. Min Mongoose and the Paul University Academy have hit the rift. We've basically talked about everything that we could have talked about in this game. And well, it comes down to the players at the end. Can they really do it? That's going to be the big question. I'm looking at things and already Orion and I looked at this and we've seen an Aftershock Oriana. And we thought, hey, like, are, are they planning to remake? Is this an accident? But the game seems to be going as normal. Yeah, for now. I mean, we'll see. I don't exactly know the rules when it comes to, um, like, how long it takes for somebody to notice when something goes wrong, something goes right. But um, right now, I mean, everything seems okay. I mean, I think, I mean, I, was, I don't know. I mean, obviously, Orana gets after start from her ultimate. That does work that mm -hmm. way. Um, but overall, I mean, that's the only time she actually ever gets to proc that, uh, that rune choice. So... I mean, we'll see. We'll see if it actually comes into play, whether or not. I mean, not having Comet, not having Airy or any other rune that would help her during the lane is going to be going to be fairly detrimental, I believe, in terms of how the lane is going to end up playing out as a whole. But right now, um, both jumpers starting on the opposite sides of the map here. I would imagine Lilia probably going to look to do mostly a full clear. All of her lanes should theoretically have push for her, so she should be able to really just dump. Like honestly, even look to make plays in, onto the Vi whenever she really wants to make plays as much as possible. So. As we do see, um, pretty early training here from the top lane. This is kind of what I talked about. This Volibear should be able to just kind of beat up this Maokai. Basically, at all points in the game. Yeah, I mean, Volibear is just slightly disgusting in the laning phase. And if he gets going, he is basically unstoppable. And even if he doesn't, once you reach that point of two items, you got all your Nashers, even like I've seen people pull out Unending Despair, you just got oh, insane yeah. amounts of healing. You're pretty tanky and. You can play everything, and even in that exchange oh, right there okay, that you've Rakan. seen, he still got heals, and yeah, Rakan got to engage, and Moshi Seeker trying to find that Ignite is used, but at the end of the day, it's still pretty peaceful, but not for losing peace, because he tanks with third shots. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's kind of what I talked about, you know, for, for Seeker here. He, he really wants to make a lot of things happen here on this pike. Looking for another hook here. He does actually get a good an angle. Oh, and he gets angle for the sun on the Rakan, already low, and Renee is going to fall down for the first blood. Nab is... Ooh. Might be up next. Trade is there. Cleanse is good. And it's going to be on one for one. So at the end of the day, I feel like it's still a pretty even sequence. Yeah, it's a, it is a one for one. But I, I will say in terms of the people that got, the, I mean, both supports actually got the kills as well. So, I mean, but they carry still alive. Still like some farmers. Did you see Krypton by in the mid lane? Oh, good flash there from Jackie. And it does force the flash of the Oriana. TPs are available on both, but... Hitmaster is also pretty low themselves on that Ari. So at the end of the day, it does actually aid the Ari to be able to trade the TPs evenly later on in the game. Mm -hmm. But for now, it could be set an angle where Dagger just walks in mid and he gets a free kill. Yeah, exactly. I mean, with how low with how, H, with how low HP Hotmaster is, he has to be very, very careful at the current state of the lane because I mean, or on a can just actually just kind of walk out of here and get a really good trade. The, the wave is actually kind of pushing away from her a little bit as well, so fairly dangerous. We do see a really good trade here by uh, losing piece up in the top side here. Actually, chuck out the waves as well. This map guy's oh, in a really bad spot. Yeah, no W as well. The Q is used. The goes. Is exchange losing peace. He's gonna call down the thunder. He's gonna call down the sun. And on all fours, he electrocutes the Maokai. And they go back to the start. Well, it seems that the volley there is off to the races. Yeah, pretty big mistake there by Skies the Limit. I don't think he meant to W that many in there. I like just like that because it put him in a really vulnerable position. And unfortunately, uh, Lucent Peace punished him for using his ghost to actually be able to get on top of him there. Um, and we do, we do see Hotmaster, he's still actually in a really rough situation here. Waves in a really bad spot, but Krypton does have pretty low mana here, so shouldn't actually be able to punish him too hard at this current state of the situation. But it does feel like Lilith is actually looking to make a gank into the mid lane. 
can use the bowling ball here as a way to wrap around. Krypton is looking for a trade, potentially. Yeah, I'm trying to burn a flash. Maybe find a kill and hit master. Trying to find a charm. Kryptonic. Good on the evade. Flash is huge, but it is traded by Dagger. Well played. Yeah, nice key flash there by the Lilia, making sure that um, she's able to buffer it in a way where it's been really hard for Hot Master to react. As well as, I mean, with Arya already using her flash anyways, she was already basically in a really bad position from the outright. So, um, well played there by Sword of Dagger. I think, honestly, for Hot Master, he either needed to communicate to Jackie saying, hey, uh, I'm really low HP, don't really have a lot of mana. Actually, wait, Sword Dig uh, is going to be engaged on here, but Jackie doesn't have his ultimate, so doesn't really able to get too much work done there but yeah i think hot master needed to communicate with this jungler a little bit better there saying hey i'm in a really bad spot i need you to help me or i'm gonna die and unfortunately didn't quite didn't quite have that communication ended up getting punished for it but they are able to make a grub play off of that as well because krypton did, was able to get pushed out of lane because he had no mana so with hot master being able to tp back to lane first they are able to get the grubs first and of course not just hit master was also sky's the limit that did beat out the Volibear of losing peace on that sequence as well. So while a thousand gold behind on paper, with these grubs, they are actually able to get the push back. Then suddenly they can find a plate or two, and that will definitely help. At least in the mid and bot lane, but top lane does not seem to fare any better than the last line that we have left of Volibear is not yet level six. Uh, Malkai is really in a word of hurt, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Malachi's in a really bad spot here because because uh, losing peace can very easily just push this wave in and actually just dive him outright under the towers. Did you see a hook lining up for your for, for Pike? Yeah, oh, wow. and that's already the kill. <laughs> wow. Okay. You know what? Maybe I take it back. Maybe that kill on the Pike was a lot more valuable because at the end of the day, Rakan only got the boots. Pike actually they got that longsword. And speaking of things that are getting got on, Malachi for the second time will fall Ooh, down, but it will be a one for trade. one trade. Thankfully for losing peace. The wave is indeed pushing towards the Maokai, so at least that wave is denied, but a one for one isn't the result that you would hope for with using all of your summoners and ultimate as well. Yeah, it is a one for one for sure, but I think overall, uh, having the wave crash into the tower and making sure Maokai does miss that miss, miss that wave is still fairly beneficial, and knowing that Fully Bear um, was able to fully push the wave into the tower, so yeah. thankfully for him, that was able to be the case. Um, but yeah, I think that Volibear probably could have played that a little bit better for the most part. I think he did not want to immediately hit him the moment Maokai debuted him under the mm -hmm. tower, but unfortunately didn't quite press S, or he would have stopped his command from, from actually going on there. But Sword of Dagger actually looking for a bot play. That, that ward just expired, so they might be able to make a play here. Ooh, the Ooh and they get a skewer from the pike, the ultimate as well. The cleanse doesn't matter, because guess what? The Rakan is the one that is called, but with glee. The Rakan is able to escape with Renee. Keeps their lives for another day. Vi has already hovered towards that boss side, and sure, the Vi is more healthy than the Lydia, but neither of them has the ultimate. Speaking of which, ultimates are already used in that top side, so this is going to be a wet noodle fight. And with that Bramble, maybe losing peace isn't going to heal as much, but Sky will still take the same amount of damage regardless. Yeah, it is, and the situation for for Malachi is really, really bad here. As you can see, the camera panning up here, you can see like so many minions are pushing actually towards the folly bear here where Maokai mm -hmm. has to basically make the decision saying hey if i walk up here i am very much likely to die in any situation here but i can't actually get any of my minions because there's no one up there to actually protect him the entire team of depaul is on the bottom side of the map and losing peace is actually playing this really well he's recognizing like hey like you cannot walk up to me if you're not going to take any damage and look at the cs gap that he's already starting to build up here. It's 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 eight, it's it's eight minutes in the game. He's already got plus twenty five CS on the Maokai. And, and anytime you have this tank v tank situation up in the top side, when your tank is able to get so much tankier than the other tank, it, team fights become really hard to play. Yeah, and honestly, they're not even the same side of tank. Because look at Volibear. Volibear wants to brawl. He wants that extended fights. And losing peace is taking that fight. Despite going a little bit lower on health, sky's the limit. Now is in danger. The flash fails and sky has to use a twisted advance. Losing peace will back off. But that's a flash burn just for a go. So that's already worth it. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, once again, it's, it's a really good situation here for losing pieces. Jackie recognizing that he could potentially make a play over to this dragon, but I mean, I will say, I mean, Sword of Dagger is actually in the area, and Cryptic Killer can very easily roam over and make a potential play if he wanted to. Rene, going for it, I don't know if he wants this. Well, he definitely does not want to fall down. The oh, ultimate dude, is huge fun as well on Nabbas, and Lydia is already there as well. The instincts of a killer might grant a kill, but it will be traded nonetheless with the Lydia dunking down. 
bringing it down with the Eep, and well, that's looking even better and better for yeah. Mimongus. You know, we we're talking about them getting that early lead, they have already got it. Yeah, exactly. They're doing, a, they're doing a really good job so far, kind of snowballing their lead. I talked about going into the game, Mofus Seeker really need to make a huge impact. We saw it on that last play, using his E and flashing behind both of them to really get the double stun there. I think Exile and Magician probably could have gotten the first kill and maybe potentially ended up leaving after they were okay like uh, with the kills, with Lilia being around in the area. But it was a two for one, so well played by Nabbitz, recognizing that he needed to at least get something off of that play that had just happened there. But we do see Maokai potentially roaming down to the grubs. Jackie is here as well. This is a two versus three, though. Yeah, and especially with the bike having that ultimate, it could be big. They actually didn't throw out the Vi, and the Shockwave comes in. Death should come from below if they are just able to find that very last auto from Seeker. One auto, two autos. The ultimate should come in, and it will. Kryptonic is going to get the last hit. But remember, with that Pike ultimate, you get extra Ooh, gold for the Pike awesome. as well. The Magician has to be careful. Thankfully for him, their Khan doesn't really have an angle because with no quickness, Renee doesn't really have any way to really force that fight through it. Yeah, it's a little tough there, unfortunately, with, with being level 5. But I think for for Ash here, she's going to have a pretty hard time at collecting all these minions from outright just, be, just because of the situation she's in. So um, she's trading back fairly well, but she is starting to lose a lot of HP. As you see, Sword Dagger actually flashing forward. Yeah, the lullaby has already been used. Swirl Seed as well. They're trying to find anything. But him, Master, remember, still have one more flash for flash in the Ari. Should be out of that one. Now the wraparound could come in from the Maokai. But if you look at the other side of the map, the Vi is present in the bot side. So despite them getting that engage, Season Desist is coming in. And Magician will not be exiled, trading towards their teammates. But they are caught in the quick. They should go down. But they find the heal. But here comes the W. Kaisa is able to trade. Volibear is an ultimate is used. And the Volibear is trying to inflict its wrath on the Rift. But they are being kited pretty well. And without Ooh. Seeker having that death from below, they will be spaced out exactly what we spoke of if you don't get Another that initial TV. pick they will find that fight but now the oriana is in as he said the real problem is no shockwave but both of them missed their crowd oh, controls no. and chronic finds the angle the skewer will guarantee the death it was messy it was hectic but it ended in kryptonic getting the most out of that one yeah double tp there from the side of mint mongoose there actually does allow maokai to get a fairly good push into the top side a couple tower plates for his name and some fairly good CS there. So overall, I mean, kind of making his way a little bit back into the game. Obviously still down quite a lot of CS in the grand scheme of things. But uh, is kind of starting to make their way back into the game a little bit. But the huge winner of the entire play was Nabitz in the bot lane here. Obviously uh, doing fairly well from in the CS category. But 3, 1, and 1. Obviously already having the Eclipse in inventory. Purchasing up that Moon Quiver as well to boot. So this guy gonna be the main carry for this DePaul University Academy if they are going to find success in this game as a whole. Um, definitely gonna have to be the, the strong person in terms of actually making these plays. We see quite a lot of trading in the mid lane. Ooh, Shockwave is missed. And suddenly him master gonna have the space, but that attack will come in. And dissonance is enough from the Oriana to find that kill. And well, Welcome to top lane, guys. Everybody's rated naturally, and in top lane, we have, like, proxy farming Volibear that does not care for any single movement. The Skies and Emin is gonna do. What is he really gonna do with that Thorn Mail? Sure. The Volibear doesn't really have a real completed item, but with Loss of Losing Peace actually going for both the Fimble Winter and what I'm assuming is gonna be an unending despair, that Volibear is gonna be immovable in the side lane. Yeah, it's going to be pretty tough uh, for Maokai to really actually deal with this ball of air from probably the rest of the game, I would say. Um, this is what the proxy is happening here. DC Seeker trying to clear out some wards here. Uh, with obviously, having the Umber Grave already purchased, it's going to be really hard for Renee to really ever get a sense of control with the wards being placed. So um, Pike already looking for a lot of plays on the bot side, and Dagger is actually in the bottom area as well. Ash does have Arrow back up and available. Kaisa does have cleanse, though, so if the, if the Arrow does ever land on Kaisa, she can just cleanse that one away and make it away scot-free. But Dragon is being started up here for the side of Mint Mongoose. They're wanting to kind of accelerate the pace of the game. It's been 14 minutes, and neither team has opted to be taking a dragon here. Is Seeker looking for play? Yeah, because it's this kind of love bath right here. The Eclipse could be used. Instinct is good. Just need to find that last auto, and it will be enough. Death from below doesn't get that kill, but here comes a little thing lullaby, and you will go to sleep here. Renee mm -hmm. is down. Navis does not fare any better, and the Lydia does indeed survive, but you know who survived as well, Orion? It's 15 minutes, and the dragon is still in the pit. 
Yeah, Dragon is still alive here, and I think, honestly, if you're DePaul University Academy, you're pretty glad that this Dragon has not quite died yet, because, I mean, the longer this game goes and the more the game becomes about just raw team fighting, I think that's where their composition is going to feel much better about their situation. So, obviously, being down four and a half, five thousand gold is obviously not going to be great for how you actually end up winning the game, but... I think in terms of their ability to play out these team fights, the longer the game goes and the less major objectives there are on the map, kind of like a ticking time bomb, the better it is going to be overall for the Ball University Academy. But we do see kind of a play happening perfect towards the top side of the map. Jackie looking for a play as well, but Seeker getting on top of Jackie here does have to slow down, but doesn't want to go too aggressive here, not knowing where the rest of the members could be. But obviously, Exile Magician down here by themselves in the boss side of the map. They could potentially make a play on to them, which was Ash obviously is completely by themselves. But right now, neither team but really making a, gr a great play on the map in terms of their aggression. But we do see Deploy University actually going to be the ones to transition their uh, resources over towards this dragon. Yeah, and it's a good play cross map because you've already st spotted Morpish and you really know that nobody's going to be able to contest you. Lilia's top side, even the Pike is top side. The Orianna the, cannot really go in on her own despite Kryptonic. Really doing a whole lot of damage. Look at that Shockwave. Could have been enough if they had oh a combat goodness. summoner, but yeah, they have an Aftershock. Sure, they're not going to be an easy bird to kill, but uh, they might be an easy one to catch. Because guess what? The Pike's coming back, but wait! Kryptonic actually found the kill, and Renee is an auto attack away. One more cog, but it will not be enough. There's a clockwork. Unfortunately, strikes the wrong time of the day. They do survive, and I believe the Vi as well is under no immediate threat. It's the kill that they have found, and despite all of our skepticism, maybe the aftershock is a play. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> Meaning, yeah. but hey, it works. It works. Yeah, I mean, if, in terms of, uh, I guess, what what is that called when you like see something and like um, you like react to it as if it's like the perfect, like, or it's like a uh, recency bias, I guess, where it's mm -hmm. oh, no, I don't think that, I don't think that's right, but basically it's it's called it's where you um, it's like something works and you're like, oh, okay, this has to work because it's working right it's now. Basically, a, a feeling through the results, not to the cause of something happening. Yeah. <laughs> There's there's a term for it. I'm blanking on the moment for what it's actually called. But um, as we are obviously seeing on the map, we did see the play towards the top side of the map. Map guys flash did get burned, but X up Magician Sums also got burned on the bottom side of the map, and he's very very low down here. Even though Kaiser has no mana, I think they could potentially threaten um, this Ash up here on the, on the bottom side if if she were to stay. She actually does end up staying as they back up, but overall it is a um, Kaiser doesn't end up backing up a huge shockwave onto the Ari. Yeah, that's from below could come in right now, but and the top lane as well. Bit of another fight, and it looks like Hitmaster will survive that siege, but the tower probably will not. The R is pretty ooh, low, ooh, and Maltish will go down to nothing. That's the kill. That's a big shutdown as well towards the Vi, and they will find that kill here with the Eep. But now they're under two they're thirds. They're taking tower shots from each and every part of the map. Another big shutdown goes to the Vi. That's a thousand four hundred gold just in that exchange in Kryptonic without a shockwave is going to be shocked down sure the seraphs gets prog but at the end of the day it doesn't oh. matter they will run it down renee definitely have the angle and the assault will batter them down and that's i believe what is this like 2300 gold injected into the vi just from this yeah that is a lot of gold i just went over to the vi currently sitting in inventory 2700 gold as of right now so very easy could just base and buy a completed item off of those three couple of kills and i think you know honestly for the side of mint mongoose just got a little over cocky here not recognize that they could actually be punished there in the middle and pike gets caught out by a face taking a bush and the other two the lilia and the oriana for krypton and sword they, they, they just didn't respect like okay like they're actually still behind us we can easily die here um, but instead, they kept trying to go forward onto Hotmaster. Sure, they, they were able to pick up the kill, but um, trading away 2,700 gold for just one kill and a turret in the mid lane just really isn't all that worth for them. So not all of a sudden, yeah. you know, DePaul University kind of feeling pretty okay with their situation here, but Maokai does not have flash up here, so probably not going to survive this. Yeah, especially with the Lullaby, there's no way that they're going to get out. They're going to be stunned. They're going to be ran down. And Sky's Limit is pretty healthy, so it will take them quite a minute. But at the end of the day, it should be a done deal. And it is a done deal, just like that tier one going down. And now you look at the game, sure. 
there's still a slight gold lead towards Mem Small Goose, but you also gotta look where that gold is allocated. Because if you look at the gold chart, you can see a whole lot of it is definitely towards Kryptonic, and the rest of it has to be in that top slide. Look at the top slide, lost in pieces severely further ahead in comparison to Sky's the Limit, but unfortunately to him thanks to that build path that he went into which is splitting that fimble winter and apparently what is a visage things did not go easy and neither the world the skill where hitmaster is able to gracefully dash past that one with a spirit rush so thankfully for him he lives to fight another day but yeah not for long that's the ball that's the attack and that's the kill will losing peace be able to fight that one without the fimble winter is probably gonna be a no can they even escape because you look at Jackie, by the way, we talked about it. It was just the Sunder Sky on the last recall. This time, it is the completed Cleaver. And the Volibear has no chance of surviving that onslaught. Killer Instinct as well. And with an evolved Q, it's going to be an easy barrage from the Kaiser. Yeah, definitely Chase Town still happening here, though. Sword of Dagger and Seeker uh, kind of still potentially looking in the area. No Vi ult and no Rakan ulti available here. So not sure what else DePaul University can actually accomplish here without those big major ultimates being available. Jackie's looking anyways. Ooh, Renee also found the angle, and that's the pike already down. Now you don't have a lot of crack control, and you just have to space backwards. Thankfully, the Ash does provide the peeling necessary for them to do that. But this is exactly what we were talking about. If they get caught in that easy engage, suddenly mm -hmm. it's a 45, it's 10 seconds, and without your pike and without the crystal arrow, it's not going to be easy Ooh, getting in this bit again. Though. Yeah, exactly just as he said. The TP does force them out, and the Oriana is there. Volibear, however, is walking into four oh, members. They will still get the one because Kryptonic is present. Lullaby on two. That is going to be massive. But the problem is, losing peace is still hitting the back line. The Kaisa is down. That's your main source of damage. And Hitmaster might go down to Wolves as well. The Ash will confirm that double. And that's another fight one for the Mince Mongoose, and it was all off of that TP. Everywhere that Kryptonic goes, it seems to work. And well, even without a Keystone, it's still working. Nine and one on that Oriana. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you don't have to have a Keystone when you're a nine and one on the Oriana. Two and a half, two and a half items already purchased. And we talked about just a second, just a second before the fight actually started. We talked about no, no fight ultimate, no Rakan ultimate, even no Ari ultimate from when they just previously died in the bottom lane. Like these champions are built around using their ultimate abilities. If those abilities are on cooldown, you have to recognize that we're just our champions are just kind of subpar to what they can accomplish on their bottom side of, on their fights when they're using their abilities. So. Um, unfortunately for them, they just didn't quite recognize that, but they, they were able to get a couple of kills. Ash Arrow, not quite able to land there, but Dragon was picked up there, obviously, by the side of Mint Mongoose here. Trying to stay around this Baron, trying to control Vision a little bit here. Also, uh, build is not quite up oh, and available no. here for Krypton. Yeah, thankfully for Jackie, he does have the ultimate. That's gonna get into the space. The, the, the guys on the back line, and they're gonna find that kill. Mind you, lose in peace is still hunting them down, but now the Volibear is all on their lonesome. Pike is nowhere to be seen. And it's a recall from Dagger. And exactly, that is not just huge, it's a Baron confirm. Yeah, and we, we just talked about the fact that, okay, obviously, the, the previous fight, they did not have their ultimates. Well, guess what? They, since they did have their ultimate abilities for that last fight, they have it for this fight up and available here. And obviously, for the side of Mint Mongoose, you're actually a Hotmaster flashing over. Yeah, <sighs> Almost thankfully for Mopish. They do survive, and that's a big flash right there out of the Ori. That could have been one. To be used on somebody that will have a significant impact on the later team fights. Cleanse is used, so they forced a fair bit out of them, go. but unfortunately Ooh, for them, they will still live. Navis does survive. Level up and Honey Fruit will be enough. So 23 minutes in the game, first Baron down, and the gold lead is starting to dwindle and dwindle because 2k gold lead at 10 minutes is nothing in comparison to a 2k gold lead in 23. Yeah, absolutely. I think honestly, I think for DePaul University Academy, I think they're right back in this game. I think they're actually mm -hmm. in a position where they're actually going to start feeling really good about themselves. Momentum is starting to switch. They're starting to. They probably can take some towers with this with the uh, Baron power with powering up the minions and able to just, uh, just using their ultimate abilities to really start fights. This is where their composition is going to come oh, online. No. I think Volibear might actually look for this, though. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, no. Losing oh, Venus can to the sun, and that gives the Kai'Sa the space to kite away. One more hit. Can be enough. No killer instinct, but that oh, was a blunder. No. That was a oh, blunder. No, no two ways around it. Yeah, that was bad. That that was rough on the side of losing peace. I don't even actually know if he actually just outright wins that 1v1, even if the stun does land, but gonna try again anyways. 
Well, it's not a one-on-one -on -one this time, and they will go down nevertheless, oh. but Navis will be traded back. Guess what? Vi is here for the trade, so despite Moppish getting that kill and getting the extra gold, it is nothing behind Jackie, who can still have one more assault on battery, but they will rather break that vault backwards. Just go back to the other side. They will buy their time, and now suddenly, look at this. Okay. What the hell is going on with the Volibear build? Because I have no clue. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure either. I think buying the second Kittle Gem might be a potential mistake. Um, just because, I mean, they're already at 360, so buying the Fimble Winter yeah. uh, would completely complete the items. So there's no reason to just not go ahead and purchase that one up. Um, but I don't necessarily know if he just didn't have... I mean, he definitely has the gold necessary. Uh, if he were, if he weren't, to, if he didn't build the kettle gem to actually just complete the Fimble winter, he has a thousand gold in inventory. So I'm not. I gotta be honest. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I'm gonna go with a misclick. I have. A, at the end of the day, Boris do be winning from that exchange, and the shopkeeper seems to have had quite a reputation to themselves recently because Brothers, no. that is oh, indeed a, a workshop no. build. And look at this. Oh, this is exactly God, the angle where the Paul needs to me. find themselves in. They have the angle to engage. They have the Baron. They can pressure the siege. And without that crystal area and without the shockwave, things are going to be very difficult. Because look at this. You got the Kitter Instant. You got the no, engage. And Kryptonic is down. That is the main damage source from the side of him, Mongoose, that will not be present for that fight in 40 seconds, but the fight is on right this one, because Jackie's already found the engage. The other thing, Lullaby is going to be too late, because the Lydia is already dead. Yeah, huge catch out there by Hot Master, the ward over the Raptor pit, oh, recognizing no they could yeah, actually go on top of Krypton dude. there. And Krypton is basically right, the entire you, team homie. at this yeah, point for Mint Mongoose here and catching them out before the fight starts. So Jackie getting over the wall with Flash and that's able to use the Killer Instinct. <laughs> getting on top of them was an absolutely massive play there for them to continue to see. So they have obviously Barabuff not being available, but look at the gold graph. The gold graph is dead no even. There was a 6,000 gold lead about six yeah, minutes ago or so for Mint homie. Mongoose. Yeah, and all of a sudden, dealer, it's a complete luck. throw yeah. for them and obviously right back into the game is DePaul <laughs> University Academy looking to pick up their second dragon of the game in nah, this that dragon. didn't just fucking happen. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's not even just the fact that the gold is being even. If you look at Nabbit, who has been positioned to be the primary carry that tries to find the angles and the engage, that is 12,000 gold onto that 80 carry. Three items, and I'm assuming that might probably be a death cap right there if you actually want to complete the three evolutions which i'm assuming the navits has done with that large rod so from that from that spot onwards kaisa's basically like in a gazodia form you got all of your evolved you got all of your evolutions you got all of your abilities you got the big potential from the vi and the ari and add on that the increased range of the killer instinct and you can pretty much have a semi-global pick comp yeah, I mean, this guy's definitely looking really, really strong. Definitely the, the, definitely the person to watch for in terms of who's going to be the one to really carry out these team fights. Even though it's going to be the Ori, it's going to be the Vi, the Rakan actually setting up the team fights to be successful. Mm -hmm. Kaisa will be the one knocking all the champions down if they're ever end up getting caught out. But obviously things are kind of stalling out here a little bit as we do see Baron not spawning for another minute or so. That's going to be the next real major objective for both these teams that they will end up playing for us. Seeker does be a little bit careful just because he is kind of playing oh. fire as Flash what? does get burned. I, I'm not exactly sure why he flashed. Maybe he felt like the spell ship was going to get broken by Vi's E. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's or, or the Q. An auto attack. Um, but the Q missed, and the yeah. E, um, I guess, since it's an auto attack, it doesn't actually break the spell shield there. Um, hey. So a little bit of a mistake, I would say, but yeah, still. The, um, the anxiety is definitely seeping in, though, and, well... That might ease that because Sky's the limit seems to be stranded. Nobody's coming in. The rotations have actually not been made. They're still playing amid them. Alkai's just saying, I'm fine, but Sky, your limit might just be the river. Sky is not enough. Sky is not close. And well, all that healing will be for naught. And it will be a man advantage any second now. Any second now. Okay, there we go. It's a 4v5. Now they rotate, now you back off, you have 40 seconds where they don't have a Maokai and you can look for an engage. Ooh, okay, Pike is actually right here at the wall, doesn't have flash, remember? 
Yeah, no flash, but here comes the engaged spell sheet. Now this time it will be broken. Quickness is utilized, but another vault breaker that will miss the Kaisa is in the midst of the faction. Really will spot. they actually get caught though? Because Navis used the cleanse, they're trying to space it out, but the Lydia will not be kited, it will not be stopped. Navis still gets the kill regardless. That Void Seeker was perfect. Vi goes down, but the Kaisa is still alive, and that's the main factor. You can now back off, recall, Ooh. and try to angle yourself towards that Baron and Mopish. He's been pretty deadly because he's looking for great angles and he consistently puts themselves in a good spot. But it's always a matter of fact of, is this just you being overzealous or are you just looking for the game winning play? And so far, Mopish has been caught more in the former where he's just in way too risky of a position. And now this position can be great because remember, ball is there. And if it is delivered onto that Ari, that is already like, uh, you win the team fight once you get like either the Ari or the Kai'Sa from the side of the Paul Academy. Yeah, really, really, really close there for Navish, mm. just potentially getting caught out from the outright and uh, being in a really bad spot as Sky's the Limit trying to get a push out into the bot lane. But thankfully for both teams, uh, both junglers were the ones that ended up dying in that exchange, so neither one really felt super confident about taking in the Baron without having the 1200 damage from the smite. So overall, just a reset for both these teams here. Uh, but overall, I, mean, I guess in terms of looking at who actually has the summoner spells, uh, several members, several mem the only member that actually has flash up and available is Exiled Magician here for Mint Mongoose. And even for uh, the side of DePaul University Academy, I mean, Nabbit has no summoner mm. spells. We'll have to play fairly safe in these team fights going forward. But Hotmaster has flash. Jackie has flash. Mul multiple members on the side of Mint Mongoose do not actually have an ability to get away if Vi just flash forwards and clicks her ultimate ability. They do not have mm. the flash to actually get away. So. Something to really keep in mind as this team fight probably is about to happen. We do see a dragon happening about in a minute, so Baron spotting him in a minute. Actually, Jack is already going by himself. Yeah, Jack is called. Layers of crowd control, and sure, they come their ultimate, but it's not enough really. It didn't actually get them off to where they need to go, and now they have to back off. Navis is still being caught. Lost in peace, however, does not have the damage necessary. Maybe the Lydia does. Navis is still too tanky. Oh, doesn't want to damage so. the damage either. Can get reached to that Kaisa. The Kaisa is just raining hellfire, killing spree for the carry, but losing peace. Oh, will a good charm, good ball breaker, kill found. Can they actually close it out though? Navis back in the fight, but they're back in the front line. Losing peace is not tanky enough for this. They are not built for the front to back this kaisa is and the side of the ball academy despite having a shaky start now are one step closer to close out this game yeah they're gonna go to, over to the baron as well i mean S S sword of dagger is still alive does not have flash though so it can be really really tough for them to actually get near this pit um obviously going around for this fight going through i think for me as well like I, even though like lilia doesn't have a great way into the pit she can still throw the bowling ball she can still try to make something happen here i think this might be a bit of a desperation but actually navitz she's gonna go ahead and kill us oh my the passive proc coming through from navitz at the very end there completely bursting out the lilia there obviously we, we do see the kill baron being picked up here most likely gonna be rotating over towards the dragon as well after some resets come through from the paul university academy me, but the struggle of getting on top of Nabbits in that fight in particular was so tough for them because they spent volley barrels like just running after the Lilia slow from this from the Riley so it's just not enough to actually pick up the um I guess the the kill there onto Nabbits and if you're not killing Nabbits in these team fights you're not going to win them uh at all because the amount of damage this Kaisa is doing at this stage of the game we talked about obviously the Vi, the Ari, setting up the team fights, but Kaisa will always be securing the team fight victory in these laces of the game. We talked about obviously going into the fact that Mint Mongoose had a massive lead early on into the game, but now we're at the position where the Paul University's Academy, their their composition is just so easy. You just press Vi, even that last fight, Jackie sprinted it. Flashed forward with the Q in the ultimate was completely by themselves. So they, they didn't have the Vialt. They used Recon Ultimate as a safety net, not even as an engage tool, and they still won the fight. So imagine they're actually going forward, getting on top of the members of Mint Mongoose, and then at that point, they're going to be a whole lot more successful, but resets have happened out onto the map here. The Poly Diversity going to try to push out their side lanes, group up into the mid lane, and see if they can break the base of Mint Mongoose. And that's really the main threat of this Min Mongoose team comp. It's a double edged sword. You got all these leads early on in the game, but since they did not translate those into dragons, they didn't really get that five grub checkpoint that they needed to get. They didn't really 
get it enough of a lead at the end of the day when it comes to that like one or two item transitions now it's a full item kaisa the kaisa has evolved all of her abilities and what you've seen there that big spot of damage that was a shadow flame and the cleanse is you they still have one more layer of cc but look at the amount of oh, damage that they do funny as as well so it doesn't even matter they're gonna bring out the ecotian rain and it will be rain from hell as renee finds that kill two down for the size of mid mongoose and this could be the end game push yeah, it's gonna be tough. And obviously, Ash and Lily both down for about 35 seconds here. It's gonna be really tough to actually even protect your base at this current state of the time. Ori's already got the push in the top side. Oriana is really the only way clear you have for the next 30, 30 yeah, third, about 30 seconds here. So Jackie's just gonna walk up and hit this tower right in Bullet Bear's face. And there's nothing much they can do about it. I mean, if they just hit the tower, they can kill them afterwards. I mean, they can get them now as well as they want to. They're yeah. already trying to get their attention and. You can tell that, sure, okay, this Volibear now is starting to get tanky, but at the same point on contact, this Kai'Sa has so much damage, Navits has melted the tank. And now they're looking for the backline killers of instinct, and the aftershock is enough for Kryptonic to survive. That's a 1k okay, shutdown, okay. but can they capitalize? Can they close out that team fight? That's going to be the real question. Dagger is still alive. The Lydia's trying to kite. Now Exile is back in the fight as well. And it will be a Vault Breaker out. They have a big timer. 45 seconds. Can they capitalize? It wouldn't be the turn. They found the angle in the ash. They found all the crowd control. And the bloom will be found. And all of them are being brought to their knees. It's all down to Moltfish. All alone. And unfortunately for Pike. He was betrayed initially, and he will be betrayed because all of his teammates will be forced to abandon him at this game that went to 36 minutes. It started great for Min Mongoose, but at the end of the day, the Paul were able to live. The resilience was there, and they were able to find the victory in the first game. Yeah, exactly. Here, huge victory here for the Paul University Academy, being de being down six thousand gold early on into the game. Definitely kind of struggled early on, I would say, in terms of actually kind of getting their momentum, getting their footing into the game. Malkai was kind of getting bullied around a little bit. Krypton was just basically beating up on Hot Master for most of the laning phase, I would say, even with the wrong rune choice in the Aftershock. Uh, still doing a really good job. I mean, I, even the bot lane for the laning phase as well, besides a couple of mistakes early on, they were getting those 2v2 kills, and they were letting their Lilia free farm. And honestly, like, if you're building a 6,000 gold lead that early on into the game, you should not be losing that game. But unfortunately, a couple overextensions in some areas where they shouldn't be extending, losing that Baron at about the 20 or so, 23 minute marker or so for the side of, you know, for the side of the Ball University Academy. I mean, that just leapfrog them into position where okay like now it's going to be about team fighting now it's going to be about like who actually does a better job in these team fights and while i think mitt mongoose still could have been successful in his team fights you still had a base at that point a nine and one oriana on your team that was so massive in this stage of the game uh that krypton just kept on getting caught out by hot master by jackie and really kind of put it in a really bad position but the huge carry of this game definitely was nabbits on that kaisa making play after play really kind of putting his team on his back once his once his supportive members set him up for success he started taking over these team fights and doing a really good job yeah, and you know, we talked about this, by the way, earlier on in the draft. We said if you can actually land these easy engages, suddenly the game becomes much more difficult for the side of Mim Mongoose. And at the end of the day, that's what happened. Of course, it wasn't just Navis. It was more or less a team effort. Because if you look at that game, and honestly, from my own perspective, I see a whole big team effort. I look at the Vi on Jackie. I look at him master on the Ari. And I even look at Renee, who... Did struggle early on, by the way, mm -hmm. but he ended the game on a 3 KD, 20 assists, and I feel like that Rakan was pretty much the corner piece of that comp working, because if it wasn't for these engagements from Renee later on in the game, maybe Navis wouldn't have actually had the space. Maybe they wouldn't have had the angle to catch an, an Ash off or to catch Moshi on that pike off. Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying. And uh, was in terms of like the supportive abilities and the CC that they have, it just it really makes Nabbit's job really easy in terms of making sure they kite back, making sure they just uh, all CC a very similar person. And once they're once they're all set up for Nabbit to be successful, it's much easier for Kaiser then to go and be aggressive with the Killer Instinct, diving into the back line, assassinating more targets when uh, when they've already killed the big beefy front line of the volley bear or even killed the Lilia before she can go crazy with a, with a little team lullaby. So really, really well done by DePaul University Academy being resilient, but obviously series is not done yet. That was just game one. Gonna have to, be, gonna have, to secure another victory. Looking to go on a two game win streak to kind of boost mm -hmm. themselves potentially into the playoffs.
Yeah, I mean, that's going to be massive. And you know what? Mint Mongoose, they've been struck, but they can come back in a fresh space. So we'll just take a break. We'll hope they freshen up because their early game was good. And if they deliver more on that, it will still be a banger. So game two will come straight after the break. Stay tuned. And I'm so scared of getting used to this. All the vines that keep you tethered in your room. Well, someday both of us are leaving here. But for now, I'll just bring this sea to you. Oh, will you meet me in the daylight like we did before? Then I felt you on my shoulder And you weren't suffering anymore You said I'm sorry that you were me I don't apologize I told you to forget me But you stayed by my side When I said don't try to make yourself Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are back once again in the game. If you've just tuned in, the first game was a bit of a brawl. Mim Mongoose did actually take the early lead, but at the end of the day, DePaul University Academy were able to close that game out. And no thanks, really, to Navis and his insane performance. Everybody played well. Navis, of course, definitely was the star of that performance. But now the sides have swapped. And Will that actually cause any changes, Orion? Because now Mint is on red, and they might have that option to counterpick even harder because they went for winning lanes, and they were able to win their lanes. Maybe with these counter matchups, they'll be able to win enough to the point that they can actually take over. 
Yeah, but I think that was Mitt Mongoose's game to lose, mm -hmm. um, for sure. Building up a 6,000 goal lead that early on into the game, making that many mistakes, definitely made the game really hard for him to play from that point on. Uh, so I think if they're able to do w basically what they did last game, just cut out the mistakes, build the early goal lead, I think they, they were much stronger individually as the players um, oh. er early on into the game, but a couple of those mistakes, given the gold lead back over to Nepal, and obviously having the not as good team fight composition definitely made it a lot harder for them to play. Um, so I think, you know, Mitt Mit Mongo shouldn't feel too bad about that game, I would say, just in terms of um, how the game, I guess, like, uh, ended, because, I mean, they, they had a massive lead, so, like, if, if I was in their team, I'd say, hey, if we just do exactly what we did last game and we don't just, like, make a massive throw, we should be in a good position. Yeah, they definitely might be in a good position in that sense, but, well, now they're in the position of the draft, and we're looking at the picks. Kaisa instantly off the chopping block, so respect for Nabbits. Taken away, Zeri is still out, Urgot still out, and I'm pretty much assuming the talent is still going to be banned in the other days. Yeah, I, would be, I wouldn't be too surprised if the Fury is left up and available, especially since blue side um, is very common for just picking a very powerful uh, blue side strong pick mm -hmm. here. Uh, a lot of bans have been uh, processed here for Nepal. They actually go for the same exact three bans they did last game, Zeri, Urgot, and Smolder. Uh, Smolder still potentially being cut first, so not quite locked in yet. And obviously, Mint, like you said, given the respect over the Nabbits on that Kaisa game, I do. I think I agree. I think he played really well on the Kaisa. I think he had a lot of some pretty good moments coming through there. Um, so kind of taking away the hot hand a little bit, making sure he plays something a little bit different does kind of make a lot of sense. Yeah, it definitely makes sense. And well, these three bands are out. And on the other side, we're still waiting for the final ban. And it will actually still be in the theory, so... Now, DePaul University, they have the options. Like, what do you go here? Do you actually still go for that B1 Ash and be flexible? Or do you just go for one of these meta picks? Because one of the things that we really haven't seen has been like, and I mean, like the Karma, for example, that's really relevant in almost all levels of play. And she can be flexed, but it looks like comfort picks it will be if they go for the Jin, and they will lock it in. I'm Jin, Jin being launched here. That definitely isn't a. I would say a bad champion to pick on B1. It kind of still leaves your team open to be fairly flexible in terms of um, anytime you have a utility to carry on your team, uh, your team can be revolved. Like you can revolve your team around. Like, okay, having set up, having the ability mm -hmm. to actually make sure like the champions do fit. But Jin obviously does struggle a lot into the tankier champions that can be picked uh, on the side for Mitt Mongu. So if they go for a traditional kind of front to back team fight where the front line is very, very tanky. That's where Jin, uh, in terms of his raw DPS, can actually really struggle in some of these games. But obviously, Mint Mongoose locking in Jinx and Brand. I would imagine the Brand is going to be slotting into the jungle position. Still has a very relevant clear. Um, not as fast as it originally was a couple patches ago, but still is very, very good. As DePaul, going to go for potentially a very push oriented bot lane with the Jin, with the Ash, you're potentially going to switch over to Lux, not quite deciding, but it does look like, yeah, it does look like they're kind of going for that identity of making sure they push in this Jinx early on into the lane. Yeah, and it's not just a matter of push, I I'm assuming that they really, you really want to set that Jinx far back. Because I'm looking at that comp, I'm looking at the win conditions, you know, you're talking about how Jin has no DPS, Jinx and Brand are probably the highest DPS caps in their respective roles, so... They have that set up. If they want to go for the front to back, they can definitely do that. But something that can mess with it is that Briar lock. Because Briar can just use their ultimate, find a good angle, and just bypass that front lock. Yeah, absolutely. It is York being blocked in here for the Mongoose's side. Um, I think I think obviously York as a champion is fairly niche just because he always has that weird um, interaction in the game where he's basically just going to be permanently in a side lane trying to do as much work as he can with the maiden with his ghouls trying to get a lot of tower pressure uh, which can be very difficult for some teams to manage if your side lanes aren't properly prepped or if you are falling behind early on into the game so if DePaul Academy were to fall behind very sim very similarly to how they fell behind in the last game they can actually struggle quite a lot uh, into yeah. this Yorick pick. And I mean, he, to that point, I would actually draw a contrast to the Volley Bear because I wasn't actually a big fan of the build that was brought out from Losing Peace. I feel like if you're winning on that Volley Bear, you probably want to go to like, like Nashers, maybe Riftmaker, and then you go tank. Uh, that full tank build did actually mean that the Volley Bear was a relevant frontliner in the team fights, but 
didn't that just mean that they basically played into the Paul's Academy's hand? And I feel like that is what happened in that game. Maybe this game they're picking the Oryx, just focus on the side lading more and focus on winning that top side. Yeah, it certainly is a possibility. That could be the reason why they're doing that, as we do see Nalo is locked in with the Jinx down on the boss side, trying to put a little bit of pressure onto the Jin and the Lux down on the bottom side of the map, as well as having some form of engage. Um, definitely kind of like that as an option is um, for the Poly University Academy, kind of considering here what other engage options they have as well. Currently, the only really go button they have is a Briar Ultimate, which is it the most reliable ability to land in the game, I would say, but Lissandra coming through with the point and click CC definitely will help their odds in terms of actually making that play. So you see potentially a set hover who actually does fairly well into Yorick, especially early yeah. on, because Yorick, Yorick struggles early on into the game. And set is known as one of the po more potent uh, early on, early aggressive laners in top lane as a whole and can actually really punish um, this Yorick up on the top side. Yeah, and I don't even just look at that Yorick in isolation. I look at that set, and I can see oh, somebody that mind. can flip an angle, but okay. Yep, yes, as I said, never mind, it's a Warwick. And now we do have a, a bit of a conundrum on our hands. Is it going to be the Briar top, or is it going to be the Warwick top? I'm assuming it's going to be Warwick, because top Warwick, you talk about early game potency, nobody's as dominant as Warwick in the top lane. Yeah, that champ's pretty annoying. To be honest, the, the, amount of, the amount of healing he has, plus if he does go top lane with barrier, it just makes the composition just, or makes the champion very, very hard to kill because even if he gets low HP, he can still be constantly healing up with his auto attacks while his barrier is going through and getting that extra healing. And plus, whenever he is low, he can just ult on top of somebody's face and just get all of his health back for fun. Um, so that champion is that champion is very neat and interactive. I would say is the best way to put that champion as a whole. Mm -hmm. uh, but really, I mean, Tapali versus Academy. I don't really know what what I would call this composition. I would just it's just kind of like a mix and match of champions um, that they just felt like were good in the moment of the game. Not a whole lot of coordination with really any yeah. of these champions besides um, potentially Lissandra going in, landing her CC ability, followed up with Lux and Briar. Hopefully, looking to assassinate one particular target. Um, that's that's probably going to be the game plan for their side. Um, I'm not exactly mm -hmm. sure where the Warwick would fit exactly in terms of if he's going to match the York in a side lane or if he's going to actually look to make plays as well. Um, and even for Mint Mongoose's side, I think their ability to get on top of the Poly University Academy's composition is much better in terms of the Vexar, the Nautilus R, and then the follow up from the Brand and the Jinx. So, I mean, both these, both these compositions. Both of these compositions have their niches and have their, you know, unique experiences. So this was going to be an exciting game. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty exciting. And maybe that actually draws me to a point that I can already tell from these two team comps. I feel like Minus Mongoose with their team comp, they can definitely play aggressive when they want to. They can look for the angles. Their front to backs are going to be good. And you have that Nautilus that's going to have an excellent engage, whether on the, on the Lux rather, or on the Jin. And that's going to make things difficult for the Paul Academy because I'm looking at their team comp and I'm thinking, okay, they can definitely be very strong when they're on the offensive, but can they actually really turtle and play in a passive position or play from behind? Because I, I don't really see a way for them to peel off that engage from Minus Mongoose. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's going to be the name of the game, right? I think, obviously, for the side of... You know, the Quality University Academy, I think they are, they don't really have a traditional frontliner. I mean, obviously, Warwick and Briar are fairly okay. I guess it's soaking the damage. Briar has her E that can soak up damage with damage reduction. And even Warwick has a damage reduction ability as well. So they do kind of have that going for them. But they're not the tankiest of members. They're, they're more of a. Uh, trying to go on top of them and try to make something happen first. So if DePaul University Academy is able to make a play happen first with their composition, I think they can be fairly successful. But if they're the ones being engaged upon by the side of Mint Mongoose, I think that's where Mint Mongoose can have a lot of success. Yeah, because I'm looking at this and here's here's how my brain thinks. My brain thinks that DePaul Academy, they pick the team comp that if it doesn't win lane really hard, they're going to be put in this exact same spot that Mince Mongoose was in game one. You need a big lead and you need to snowball that lead. But the good thing for DePaul University Academy is that their team comp is really facing or family in that direction. Like the Volibear, he, he's a utilitarian champion. You can go for that tank build. Warwick just wants to win. Jin wants to win. Lux wants to make the Jinx's lane a living hell. So from that facet, 
I'm looking at that comp, but I'm thinking, okay, if they win the lane, they can definitely very easily snowball. But I feel like if they don't win, they will crumble. And it's just House of Cards set up at this point. Yeah, I, I think I agree. I think both these teams' uh, compositions are going to be uh, really about who actually engages first. And I think whichever one is actually able to do that, I think that's where the success is going to be. Because neither team has a great way of absorbing uh, the engaging, kind of kiting backwards. Both these teams want to be going forward. So whichever one is able to actually execute upon their engages first, definitely will pick up a victory here. Yeah, well, I mean, take two, just for our closing thoughts. Uh, game one, we did actually kind of predict the fall because we said they have the better comp. I'm gonna go on a whim and just pick Min Mongoose for the first for that game because I look at that comp. I love the Jinx, I love the brand, and I think that the Nautilus and the Vex, who we haven't really touched on that much, are actually gonna be enough to space out the Briar and Warwick because that's pretty much all the crack control you need. There is no real engage. You need a root from the Lux or a root from the Jin for things to work and maybe if your Sandra gets a good angle maybe Headmaster then can find that Frozen Tomb but I look at the Vex and it's a much easier access to the back one. Yeah absolutely I think in it's gonna be a lot about flanks it's gonna be a lot about how uh, Deploy Mercy Academy's uh, positioning whether they're actually looking for these fights is gonna be very much um you know, successful. I, mean, I would say that's where they re really make it. Because if it is just front to back, I think it's the engages that they make will be very telegraphed. But the big thing, that, the big advantage they do have is the Barrier Sphere. If it does land on something where the fight will obviously, uh, everyone that gets hit by something will get obviously fear besides the initial yeah. target. And then it, it actually will open up potential angles for War to jump through and for the Sondra to jump through. But I, I do agree that the effects is long range ultimate, even with Nautilus's follow up with the long range death charge. Uh, they do have a much more guaranteed engage, but I think the Poly versus Academy still have uh, avenues for getting on top of them. Okay, so let's close this out. Who do you think will win? Is it going to be a 2-0 for the Paul University Academy, or are we actually going to go for the third game? Uh, I think just depending on like uh, how I guess the games that I've seen so far in terms of like how like how lengthy the games are. Um, most of these games are going 30 plus minutes, and anytime you have a Jinx in the game, that's like a game's going 30 plus minutes. Her win rate all, like sky skyrocketing it a little bit. So I would get this one at Mid Mongoose. Okay, so looks like Ryan wants to go for a game three. Me and him are gonna go in a brief break. The game is loading and we're gonna see the fate of this series and the fate of the team that will be on fifth and a team that will be dropped down to seventh. So stay tuned. The action will continue on the ref short.
and the rift is on the champions have been summoned and we have yet another game on our hands barrier for the warwick just as we called it but losing peace is going tp ignite to counter and speaking of countering things Maybe you should count your blessings because with that Nautilus, it will be a very spicy engage. And oh, that is no. called sleeping at the helm. Easy kill found and on the Jinx, no less. Oh, not that's the great part. Yeah, not paying attention there, Nabis. Definitely has some time. You kind of walk around a little bit and be like, oh, snap, there's a Nautilus in my face. I need to run away. But unfortunately for him, doesn't get any caught out. But at the end of the day, it is just 500 gold. It is just no summoner spells blown, so not the end of the world here for Nabbits at the current stage of the game. So overall, definitely should be feeling relatively okay about themselves at the current time. Obviously, you know, sad B is fairly appropriate. Getting first blooded like that never is a good feeling, I would say. But obviously, in terms of like how both these English are starting, both starting on the bottom side of the map here, mm -hmm. uh, I can't imagine anything too crazy. I'm not exactly sure just how aggressive Briar actually is in the jungle. Uh, her gang, her ganking presence is fairly good. She does kind of get a little bit screwed when she ganks a champion like Vex because she immediately just gets feared as she just starts running towards her. So definitely not super optimal, I would say, in terms of uh, her ganking potential. But she does have Lissandra to set her up for those type of ganks, so that can be a little bit successful. But um overall I, I would imagine the setup in the bot lane is definitely gonna be the kind of the name of the game here for the best to play here a seeker looking for a hook yeah hook found but level one jinx is not really going to be the most damage on the back of that and at the end of that exchange it's actually Malpish ends up on the losing end of that sequence potions are burned only from the Nautilus. Lux is keeping her potions and the fleet yeah, on Nabbit. There's gonna be enough level two advantages. Falcon, what is that dress line? Riot! Huh? Yeah, it look it looks a flash on Nabbit. I think he was actually pretty okay there. I think a yeah. bit of a panic flash there coming through from Nabbit. If anything, I think he just uses his ghost actually able to get out pretty relatively okay there. Um, but still overall able to kind of make the play happen. Is Jackie looking for to gank in the mid lane? The crit time usually actually uses his ability that doesn't actually have the fear available. Yeah, and well, there it comes. The Frenzy is on. Good stun from the Briar, but can it connect? The answer is no. The E was not enough, and Jackie was not able to scream their way into First Blood. And well, that's going to bode well for the Vex. Unfortunately for the Vex, the Flash is blown, but the Ignite is still there in case Dagger wants to visit that mid lane. Ooh. Yeah, one HP here for Krypton in the mid lane. Having a relatively tough time here, especially after that gank, and doesn't have TP either, like you mentioned, so not really able to get back into the lane. Uh, so if they wanted to base, they would have to miss out on quite a lot. Uh, but able to kind of able to collect this wave under the tower, probably going to be a relatively okay to get a base off, so it is going to be in an okay position here at the current state of the game, as we do see uh, both junglers up towards the top side of the map. Just seem going to make some plays up there. Uh, Brand is uh, uh, ahead of the pace here of, of Briar's because of the time that it was invested into that boss side gank. Uh, but Briar will be able to get that, that scuttle crab due to the nature of the push here up to the top side by the Warwick, which Brand actually did a pretty good job recognizing, hey, I can't actually go for the top crab, so I'm going to sprint down towards the bottom crab to make a play. Yeah, well, a play that could be made in the Yorick because... Well, Sky's the Limit is pretty too low, and guess what? Hitting those ghouls doesn't heal a whole lot. Thankfully for Sky, they do survive, and the healing will be pretty useful, especially with the Yorick out of mana. Warwick should be able to sustain in that lane, but just as I say that, the shovel is pretty hard, but yeah, the Warwick is still going to be healthy. Yeah, Warwick's pretty okay, especially as the minions get lower and lower, he will be able to kind of set himself up for success, but Sword of Dagger looking for to gain and in the boss side, they see him on the ward. And well, they do catch Navis with that kill, and guess what? Here comes the brand. Great stun from Dagger, and the blaze will be enough. Another double. Three kills in four minutes on the Jinx. A nightmare scenario for the Paul Academy. Yeah, exactly. Especially because, um, I mean, with, with, how, with how strong Jinx can be as the game does progress, uh, getting three kills this early, plus the CS lead is going to be absolutely detrimental, especially since your bot lane is Gen Lux. You don't really have great uh, tanking to send on the bot side with this with matchup. You don't really have a great way of making plays happen as the game does go on if you fall behind. So, uh, unfortunately for them, probably not going to be super relevant, I guess, as the game does as it progresses forward. But we'll have to kind of wait to find us uh, slow down the pace of the game for, of this Jinx and don't let her snowball out of control. Well, I mean, 
The Jinx is a very good spot, and especially with that purchase, I like the early Noom Quiver, especially on the Jinx. Because your whole point is to get two or three items and be ahead of that curve, and then you're the hyper carry that basically out damages everyone in that lobby. And Magician is basically sprinting to that part of the game, and that early grubs might signal losing beast to be careful because sure the maiden is out but sky's the limit can easily okay i say that but sky that's walking too far forward um, that's a lot of confidence in that dog but the dog doesn't got the fight in him anymore yeah not really sure what to say about that one just a really big mistake not pressing the barrier and not really even trying to save himself in the situation but i mean i get maybe he just didn't realize that uh ignite was up and available it's nice little slow letting care on to onto renee yeah, so speaking of the fire, Brand comes in, tries to light the place up, but thankfully for them, you survive at the expense of Renee's flash, so yet more summoners are being burned. And now the big timing that has to be watched out for is not just the mid lane level 6, but it's also the junglers in a level 6, because that pyroclasm in that bot lane with an all of this engage is a death sentence for a Jin Lux. Yeah, absolutely. Jack, you're looking at the mid lane, though. Yeah, and well, that should be a kill. Dagger, there's no way that they walk out of that one. They actually get the stun. They walk out of this one. And they don't bleed to death. They survive. Hitmaster is trying to find that last bit of damage. But they walk into safety. Outside of the reach of the Lissandra. And the Lissandra does encircle Kryptonic in that ring of frost. But it will not be enough. Kill will not be found. And this is the second time that somebody walks. And it's not a kill. It's an execution. But a uh, dagger? Question mark? Uh, he died to Raptor Camp. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That a boy. Good job, man. Uh, but yeah, honestly, I, th I think they. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Good recall. Yeah. That's a nice little coping effect. Um, but I, I think uh, you know, honestly, I, I like the decision going on top of the brand there, not uh, able to very, relatively squishy target. I think they could have waited a little bit on uh, Lissandra Ultimate just because uh, they were already being CC by Briar kept in place. I don't understand if they needed to immediately use. The ultimate coming through as Sky is potentially he does have a barrier. Doesn't want to press on either. Um two times in a row. A little weird. Uh well the Oric is having a good time, but guess what? Who is not having a good time? Is that Briar. A whole lot of damage is inflicted. Good roots, however. They do land the crack control, but that four shot does no damage. I mean, an A is gonna take all the damage in the world. We were just talking about this trio. And the brand comes in at the nick of time. Another kill. And this game is snowballing out of proportions. Eight minutes. And the Jinx is 4-0-1. The brand is ahead. The Warwick is out of the game. How do you even get back over the Paul? Um, if you believe in a god, a prayer. Uh, hoping <laughs> that you uh, find some somehow that... When we saw it last game, Mint Mongoose had a 6,000 gold lead. They were doing really well, and all of a sudden, they just decided they didn't want to win the game anymore. Um, but overall, I, I think, um, you know, Mint Mongoose is making a lot of really good plays, a lot of really good decisions, punishing a lot of the mistakes that, you know, uh, the Boy University Academy is making throughout this game. Uh, I think so far, I mean, everything has been fairly just like a uh, big mistake. Big mistake. I mean, Lucent Peace is just absolutely murking this Warwick. I think he's probably reconsidering uh picking like okay why exactly did i pick this warwick uh because he is like not having any fun whatsoever and he's uh, just well, yeah yeah he, he's gonna think about it a bit more right now stewing on that question yeah. is going to be the case because it, it's been a boiled dog you know the ignite has been definitely used to its best extent here for losing I mean, this is a uh, tower at nine minutes so yeah Okay, is, is it safe to say that this game is pretty much over at this point, Ryan? I, I wouldn't necessarily say it's over, but it's like it's gonna have to have a lot of mistakes coming through from uh, from Mint Mongoose. I mean, we, we did see that last game, but I think this game, like the snowballs are already starting. Like when you're down this much gold this early, they did get the dragon though, so it's barely beneficial, but they're being wrapped around here by the Vex. Oh, the Warwick uses the ultimate, but guess what? It doesn't matter because the Death Rocket is super at his mega. Kills found on both sides of the map. Jinx is excited, and that will be a kill to be found by the Jinx. A double for them, one for Deuce in peace, yeah, and right. that Warwick is exactly well. what the is doing. Oh, no. Warwick died as well on the engage. They might even lose another tower up in the top side. They're going to lose the plates in the mid lane. At least they were able to get the dragon, you know, some sort of, I guess, like copium 
or like, hey guys, we got something going right for us in this game, but this game is becoming an absolute wash. Uh, I feel like a wash is an understatement. This is 13 and 0. It's 10 minutes. They already got one of these towers. Maybe the good thing oh, for the side of DPUA that they actually got the first grub rotation. So you're not going to have the, what are they called? Like void grubs? Yeah, I think they call, what they call the void links. Yeah. I don't know because there are the there are the Belveth voidlings, there are the the ghouls from the Yorick, and then yeah. there are these, and they're different. They're not the same ones as Belveth, but this is the same engage that we've seen in the bot lane. This time in mid is deja vu, and this time it's another victim. It's hit master, and yeah, that, that's it. That's over. 14 and 0. This mid tower should easily be gone, especially with them getting that grub. So it's not just going to be the tower, it's also going to be Renee who's found on top of it. Oh, Seeker's going to die, though, for the first kill of the game for the Paul University Ooh. Academy. Able to kind of feel like, okay, like, now we're starting to get into this game. Warwick potentially looking out in the mid lane, but I don't think he can make anything happen here. The CC from Brand would just completely stop him. So it does make the good decision, backing away, making sure, making sure something can happen. But yeah, I mean, honestly, I mean, Seeker's doing a really good job of this game alongside of uh, Dagger, just like sort of Dagger, just making uh, constant play after play. The CC from Nautilus into the Brand Stun, into just the follow up damage from this Jinx. Sitting on Kraken Slayer plus Pickaxe. We got a two level lead up in the top lane here. This York is just absolute. It's the first item, Hole Breaker, as well. This guy is going to go on a tower destroying mission. I mean, that is where a mission has kind of been accomplished. It's here too, it's on its last legs in that top side, of losing peace. We'll definitely pivot towards that bot lane next, but it means that they are pretty aware that Sandra was hovering towards that part of the map, and it's good play, really, from the other side, because now the Yorick got the Skies and Limit stuck, and he will find the auto, he will find the barrier, but it should not be lasting for long. Losing peace is unstoppable, and the push will continue. Nabbits, he was good on the carries, this time on the utility marksman, and he's just being utilized as the victim. Easy combo for Vex. It's just one more auto, but it's not found. Nabbits, will they survive? The answer is yes, and now they will have the here. final call from that fight. Moppish is going to go down, and this could be the beginning of something beautiful. It could be the beginning of a miracle, but from that miracle that I was talking about continues that what should be the case of Exile Magician just running rampant on this game. 8 0 and 3. If you look at the gold, it's 7,000 gold to 4,000 on bot. It's 7,000 gold to 3,000 on top. Yeah, like the, these two carries should really do a whole lot of work in this game. Yeah, absolutely. But I think at the same time, though, Mint Mint Mongoose needs to recognize the fact that if those two champions are not around, they're actually, they're, everyone else is not that far ahead of their counterparts, which we saw on the bottom side of the map. They tried to go for an aggressive play with just Nautilus and just the Vex, and DePaul University Academy did a, did a good job punishing them on that play. So, I mean, obviously the game is in a really bad position for the mid Mongoose just doing an absolute great job bouncing back from last game, not letting their massive throw, I would say, early from last game bother them whatsoever getting a huge gold in this game and just completely stomping their opponents but that isn't going to look for they got to make sure they stay focused make sure they don't do anything too crazy in this game is once again work being engaged upon i don't know if he can do much about it ah uh, yeah it's just gonna be one more hit from the shovel yep that's it I mean, at this point, isn't Warwick just a glorified cannon minion? And look at this. The Jinx is doing well. Look at the Briar damage. It's looking pretty... I, I would say I, I was optimistic, but then I looked at the Jinx damage and I realized, yeah, there's no way that they can kill her. Maybe the Log Scan, but there's also a heal. There's also a double kill. And this Jinx is 10-0-4. and four. He's destroyed the game. Hall Breaker, and now probably what should be a Profane Hydra from Lose in Peace. Tower destroying mission. It's a game ending mission. Uh, I mean, he should, 14 he should minutes in. and the inhib is open. Yeah, I mean, he, he might just actually just take the inhib outright. I mean, Renee's here can somewhat stop them. Maybe he's like, okay, I don't want to actually take the inhib at 14 minutes into the game just because the game is naturally just really hard to end yeah. uh, very early on in the game just because you're just not super strong to tank up to a Nexus Tower just outright mm -hmm. over and over again. And it's really hard to farm a way that has super minions pushing into it. So, um, unfortunately, no, does it makes it, I, I would say I agree with the decision, but losing peace. Oh, he will die in peace with oh, that spark no. from the Lux. The Renee. 
that gets that kill and well it's a thousand gold shutdown but it does go to the support thankfully for them the support is luck so at least some damage some consolation but with that dragon being taken on the cross map sure they got that shutdown they got a thousand gold but how much can they do with that little round of gold yeah i mean honestly um oh actually unfortunately Briar missed this land renee getting engaged Yvonne. Oh, it's a Pyroclasm, and the Briar is going for the engage. The brand is pretty low, but the brand does a whole lot of damage. Jinx as well. That's going to be another kill. Another shutdown to be found. Magician is raining down the Hellfire on the Jin. That's another kill. Excited again, and the sky is the limit. Will dash away because that duress will not be infinite. It is limited. The potential for that Jinx is limitless. Magician has pulled one out of the bag, and that's the trick I did not expect seeing. 16 minutes into the game. Maybe one inhibitor is not enough to end the game, but two what is that oh, nice line, guys? Come on, for goodness sake. Fix that champion. I honestly what, what's uh, I think they shouldn't stop. Just keep going. Like, I mean, like we are. It's in the game here. Is it over? Actually, the Jinx might have enough damage. Jack is down, and there's the two carry members here. Look at oh, the damage that the Jinx is putting out. The problem oh, is, she's, she's died to the tower, and that's going to be another shutdown. And Navis was the carry for game one. Might he actually bring out the beginning of the miracle? The Hydra is profane. The spark is insane, and the hold will keep them in the game. DPUA. My counter breath is 8 to 30. Oh, well, no. it does not stop. The action is totally on its head. Kryptonic is going to find another one that is 39 kills in 17 minutes. Yeah, it's well, it's 39 kills in 17 minutes, but 31 of those kills are on one team. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But, but I do think that, uh, I guess, overall for this game, I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised Krypton uh, stayed on the bottom side of the lane and didn't actually roam up with his teammates in the mid lane to actually potentially make the plays with the Jinx. I think if they just roamed over uh, and engaged upon him, kind of protected the Jinx, I think they could have actually went for the play and potentially even ended the game. Jinx, when, she, when everyone's respawning and getting her passive, her passive stacks. Uh, for those yeah. that don't know, and she is able to just get massive amounts of attack speed if she's able to get kill after kill. But that's hook landing here by a Seeker. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a dead Briar. That's going to be three auto attacks to get the Lux four. Jinx is still alive, mind you. And she's actually going to go away from the Jin ultimate range. The main problem is, where is the sustain? Because there's not a whole lot of it. The Jinx is trying to heal up. The Vex is there to cover, and it will be enough to keep the Magician alive in this game. And now you got to look at the other end and... You know, if you're wanting to piece out a miracle, you gotta think out the pieces that you have. And well, you don't have the Warwick. The Warwick is dead. You don't even have the Frozen Tomb. The Ring of Frost might be enough, but the Vex has the crop control and the Jinx still survives. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I, this game it might actually be over at the 20 minute marker. This is like absolutely just out of control. 35 to nine, 15,000 gold lead. Three at the 18 minute marker. Three inhibitors down, like you said, as well. I mean, Three inhibitors oftentimes is a nail in the coffin when the game's like very early on in the game. At this point, I just don't know if I mean, they might not even have the damage necessary to kill off a lot of these minions. Obviously, Magician's <laughs> really low. He will have to at some point either, either heal or reset, like whatever he's got to do to get to kind of find some sustain to to, to even out his there it is. But uh, does get the red. Uh, there is a little. Actually, Briar Ultimate is coming, I think. Careful, because the Warwick is there. Magician is not healthy enough to sustain the whole wrath of the dog. But guess what? The dog will not be enough. And Briar as well gets caught up. The frenzy targets you to the wrong enemy in the Vex. Despite missing that ultimate, Exiled is going to hit that rocket. And he's going to find that double. Yeah, going to find the double. Might even find the Nexus here. I mean, three inhibitors is down. Rift Herald is fun. We might have a dancing Rift Herald as well. Yeah, the Herald is summoned. This is the end game push. Exiled, use the heal just because he wants to confirm that kill. They find that one locket is used. The first turret is down. The Nexus is completely open. And it's 19 minutes and 40 seconds is what it takes for them to swipe them back. A game three is in our hands. Well, okay, I mean, I knew, uh, I said if the game goes to like 30 plus minutes, that Jinx is like going to just take mm -hmm. over the game because her, her team fighting is just that crazy when she gets the items going through. Uh, I didn't think Jinx had 20 minutes. Who's 21, 1, and 9, by the way, uh, at the very end of the game. Had 3,000 gold in her inventory. Didn't even spend it. So she could have had four items. 
at 19 yeah. minutes into that game, which is absolutely bonkers, by the way. Um, but over, I mean, honestly, if this game was just a stop, there's not really too much to talk about it. Every single lane basically got gapped all the way through. Uh, and there wasn't really much for the Paul University Academy to do from that point on. I mean, when you fall behind like 15 to zero at one point, you just don't have the goal necessary to even make any kind of plays. So hopefully if you are the Paul University Academy able to bounce back, obviously you won game one. So now you get side selection once again. So maybe going back to red side will be a better option for you, but definitely had to bounce back mentally. I would say put themselves in a much better position to win game to game number three. Yeah. I mean, this game, I, mean, I, I thought the game one is going to be hard in the men, Mongo, uh, men monsters meta, but Hey, they survived and they're doing pretty well. And well, the men mongoose, uh, I guess if there's ever a statement to make, it was that game. Yeah. So yeah. walking into game three, confidence that's an all-time high, and they are sharp mechanically as they has ever been. But maybe that's their hubris, or maybe they'll continue to excel. And that's what we'll find out. A quick break, and the finale of this game will be upon us. See you soon, boys. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've basically had it all. We've had the nail biter game one with the two teams and the great David versus Goliath story where you come back from adversity to succeed and ascend your way and actually go into that winning position for game one. And then game two is like, you get clapped straight in the face. That Warwick did not know what hit him. The Jinx ran the game through. And well, with that kind of game, with that kind of game two, how do we feel about game three now? Mint is back on the red side. And that means that, could it be the same story or is it actually going to change? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's kind of hard to say. I mean, we'll have to wait and see exactly what plays out in the draft, right? But I mean, if, if, if it, like I was kind of talking about it off broadcast a little bit, but I was saying, you know, like even if you do have a really good plan on the blue side, where like you feel really good about your situation, I don't know if I'd want to play on blue side again after what just happened in the last game. Or, like, uh, I would say just, like, try to find, like, just a lot of, just, just a different type of game that you would play where it's, like, don't even play any, like, any tip you played last game, just don't even think about it. Just drop it. Yeah. Like, All right, we're moving on. That game did not happen. There was yeah, not a 21-1 and one jinx at 18 minutes into the game. That did not happen. And, uh, like I said, they're going to go a complete different route. Last game, they obviously put the Aspie one going with a very early rail they're saying hey you know we're gonna scrap we're gonna fight we're gonna look for yeah. engages because it, it worked for them and game mm -hmm. number one obviously after you know mint mongoose made quite a lot of mistakes 
Um, but I mean, hey, they're saying, hey, like, you know, this is something we can we can actually win here if, if we do look for fights and look for plays. But, you know, he got the hot hand on the Jinx with Exile Magician, kind of filled himself a little bit saying, hey, like, we, we can go pretty aggressive here, locking in the Vi as well. Yeah, you no, know, it's all about identifying win conditions for me because what we have seen from that game has definitely made me, like, just establish some parameters of what's going to happen in this game. What we've seen is that both AD carries are absolutely cracked, but especially on the side of DePaul University Academy, when Navis was actually put on a hyper carry and was put in a position oh. where he can do the damage, yeah. looks like on this Samira, we can easily work it out. And a Samira and a team comp that has a lot of crack control and has a lot of ways of enabling the Samira to actually use that Inferno trigger, she's no slouch. She can easily run around games, Ooh. especially against an immobile champion. And this is perfect because in game one, the Oriana actually didn't have a lot of tools for ball delivery. But what better combo can you have than a Magnus Storm in a shot? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, like, like I said, going for just a complete mental switch here for DePaul University Academy, but losing this does not care about anything that they that DePaul University can throw at him because he's just gonna go back with the Yorick blind again. And obviously last game it was the Warwick. Did not work whatsoever. Um and he's saying, hey, I don't think this guy has anything that he could pick into me that would actually work and provide a, a good a good situation for them. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and pick that one up for themselves, and potentially bending away some jungler options here for mint for mint side. But anyway, this Hinshaw, um, thinking okay, the rail is gonna be going into support with the Samira and the bot lane, bending away the brand as well. So I mean, maybe the Paul could theoretically throw the rail into the into the jungle if they wanted to. Um, has been after a little bit, so but it is still fairly present. Yeah. Um, mint mongoose obviously does still have quite a lot of options here. Haven't picked their mid laner, haven't picked their support either. Uh, they do see the Oriana, so I would imagine they could pick their mid laner and see what the rest of the composition is um, for DePaul's side. That way, like, you can just really counter it out with support, or you can just go with a bit of a safer option. I mean, Tom Kitch is really good in the situation right now, because obviously DePaul's composition is very go button, go forward, and if you cancel that, that engage with the with the Tom Kitch, that works too. Or, in terms of the Nautilus, making the plays of your own, just make it, getting on top of them before they can get on top of you, is also an option. I mean, three champions that played really, really well in last game stomp is already being selected here. But, I mean, for DePaul, I mean, they're, they're going, like, once again, just full on engaged, full on wombo combo, circle composition. Ooh. You've got Wukong, Oriana, Samir, Rel, a whole bunch of champions that just have a whole bunch of circles. Um, AoE, just machine, and then potentially no Lowey up at the top side, another circle. This yeah, well, open. yeah, another circle, but this one is definitely a circle of guaranteed death in the top side. And Ooh. well, this game is full of surprises, ladies and gents. We have an Aurelion soul, and well, Min Swan Goose seems that they want to play the same plan that they didn't actually get to play in the in game two. They wanted the Jinx to go late. They wanted to build a team comp where the Yorick carries on in the earlier part of the game. You try to get your objectives around topside. You try to stall these dragon picks from DePaul University. And this time around, they're supplementing it with yet another hyper carry. Sure, really on Soul has been nerfed to the dumpster. Let's just agree on that. There's no denying that Rayon Soul has really been nerfed. But He's still one of the highest cap champions in the game. If it gets to 20, 25 minutes, and that Aesol is well farmed, this game is going to be disastrous for DPUA. So if you're on the side of DePaul, you better hope this game ends in 25 minutes or less. Yeah, I, mean, I, think, I think for DePaul, you're going to be very, very aggressive with a lot of your team fights. You can't just get um, ch choked out by really Soul or by Jinx. You have to get on top of of them you have to make sure your engages land because if you're if you're if you're not diving forward and making the engages happen your team fights are definitely going to struggle like you mentioned um, but i think they do they want a lot of great options they've got wukong with the delivery ball system with rel as well and then potentially setting samira up for success but you gotta be able to get there you gotta be able to get to those points in the game where you can make those things happen last game they just never had a chance to ever actually get there yeah. because york was just one v wanting uh the top laner on repeat jinx was just getting kill after kill on the bottom side alongside of the nautilus hooks landing every single time so i think if the early game goes much better 
for uh, DePaul University Academy and just everything kind of just works out for them a little bit better in their own individual performances. I think this game can be much, much closer in terms of the team fights, but I have to wait and see. I mean, obviously DePaul for mid Monkey is feeling really, really good about themselves from last game. Yeah, I mean, basically each and every, like both teams are playing what won them their own game. You know, we got that team and we got that Yorick this time around that should actually enable Mince Mongoose to pretty much play for that dominant top side of the map. And DePaul, they're playing for their win con in game one. Just boot Nabbit's and something that he can carry on, get everybody else to facilitate for them, and a strong top lane for Sky's the Limit to make sure that you also survive that top onslaught. Because that Ilawi, once she gets to level six, she can unironically 1v2 in that lane. Yeah, it certainly is possible. I think for both these teams here, um, once again, it's going to come down to uh, who kind of uh, successfully um, works out their own identity and who executes upon it better to, to the point of, I think, for the side of Min Mongoose. So and even though you do have the great scaling of Aurelian Soul and Jinx, I mean, if you're able to get going early on into the game like they did last game, I mean, this game can end very, very sim similarly to how we saw in the last game. Uh, but I think if you are for DePaul, if you're able to land your massive engage, like we saw in that game number one, after they kind of stalled out the lead that Min Mongoose was able to obtain, their team fights were actually fairly solid in terms of how they're actually executing upon them. So um, we saw obviously how game one and game two never went, but obviously this is the game, do or die game for both these teams. Yep. And well, I mean, with that, we just have to come to a conclusion, and that conclusion will be our own prediction of this. So. All right, you said yourself two things here uh, on the desk, like between games one and two. You said that games here usually don't really end in the 20, 15 minute mark. So games can last a bit longer. Teams really don't close it out very cleanly early on. And that can give a chance toward these scaling comps. We've well, also agreed that these easy alt buttons that tells you go in, this is a big team fight engage will work wonders for your team so which one of these two philosophies do you side with more do you side with the fact that you can scale to 25 30 minutes or do you actually believe that these better engages gonna negate any really inherent advantage in this round yeah i, I think i like uh how mint mongoose played in that last game and i think mm -hmm. they have a lot of momentum and i think they have a lot of things just like working for them currently in the series where even though they, even though they lost game one they had a 6,000 gold lead, and then the last game was an absolute stomp. So two, both games in a row, massive gold leads, and I think they'll be able to transition that into game three and pick up a serious victory here. Well, so fresh, so clean was Min Spong Goose in game number two. Game number three is still up for grabs. Will DePaul University Academy be able to respond in the exact same way they've done in game one, or will they actually take the helm? and dominate all of these are basically congestion we will let the players decide what they have so the game is gonna load in and the epilogue of this story will be coming soon so stay tuned
and the last game of the evening the last chapter that we will have here at the protector league we were bound to get a team that will be seventh and a team that will be sixth and one of them will emerge victorious the other one will actually be heading in the danger zone where they might actually have to miss playoffs so a lot at stake here of course as we've said all about this game we've seen two very different approaches from the two sides scale be safe and allow lose in peace to scale and on the side with the paul university it's allow nabis to take over that game on that samira so orion with these two ideologies in mind where should we put our focus on to at the beginning of the game yeah i think uh obviously i mean for me it's definitely the bottle of bat bot lights right where it's like uh if nabbits or excel position if either one of them are able to get ahead of the other one i think the game is just going to steamroll from there um but you do have to make sure that you know um losing peace doesn't just take over the game on the top side of the map as well so i think jackie might have a fairly hard time managing uh exactly where he wants to put a lot of his attention uh early on into the early stages of the game i would say um but i think uh it's never gonna hurt to really uh accelerate your samira early on in the game because her ability to just like get on top of jinx alongside of the rail uh can be like absolutely devastating in the early stages of the game if not handled super well yeah well it is all about handling that game and seeing how you can play it out at the early stages so far seems like that nautilus might actually play a very important role because i'm looking at that nautilus rail relationship in that lane and well it's always going to be about who hits level two first because as you can see in top lane sky is late to level two and he's going to take the brunt of the pain and asol is going to have a pretty safe lane in that situation so bot lane as he said is probably going to be the one lane that is guaranteed to have something spicy and both of these junglers contrary to what you and i would actually think is a common wisdom are pathing into that top side of the map yeah definitely a little, definitely a little curious i think i think for skies though obviously getting punished very already having to blow flash here and even uh able to get a nice little gank here in the mid lane from sword and dagger and like from a potential die here actually he's just dead yeah peace is just dead wait yeah. peace is, is they, are they dead they actually walk away from the minions Maybe very low on health and they're just uh, abandoning that kill. It's first blood, guys. I mean, ja I mean, Jackie could have easily just walked over there from do it from doing the wolf camp and just gotten a free first blood there, on top of um, off top of the uh, losing piece. They're not having flash uh, up into TP and ignite, but instead of wanted to focus on the camps instead. I, mean, I think. I mean, I don't know. I, I think he definitely could have went for it. Yeah, I mean, there was definitely a space there for the Paul to get that first blood, but they'd rather play their own game. You don't really want any outliers happening in this part of the map, which... I mean, a 400 gold for you should be a good outlier, should be something that you're aiming for. Because they've lost two flash in the two solo lanes. And this is actually going to make things much easier for Dagger, who walks back in towards that mid lane and hit Master. Actually pushed very far away from that wave. And that, just to pay you a piece... Like, this Aesol was very far behind in that lane, but now that Vi has probably saved Kryptonic from having a very rough start. Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think I think even though, like, Aurelia and Sol is with Lilian and CS, but since the fact that Aurelia is pushed out of the lane and having to TP back into the lane definitely does so kind of suit the fact that um, they are kind of able to be in a row to the position. Nice little hook landing here onto Renee, but Renee going in forward, actually. Yeah, and especially with the Vi, by the way, being there in the dry bush is going to be very dangerous. They're rooted in, and Renee might have bit more than they could chew. It's just the one last bit, but the zap is not going to come in range. Ignite oh, is nice. taken down, and it's first blood for Mopish. Yeah, it is that not. Let's pick up that kill, though. So at the, end of, at the end of the day, it's not super big in terms of damage, but lose in peace. Yeah, Sky is caught in that hook, and the tentacles did not proc the heal. Lose in peace will live. And make sure the sky dies in agony. And that top side has been a story of Yorick. So whoever has that Gravekeeper seems to be running rampant in that top side. Yeah, Lucy Peace starting to dominate once again up on the top side of the map with that solo bolo up there. Even before Sky Splitter, obviously not having level six yet. So Yorick recognizing he actually had a pretty opportune moment to look for a play there up on that top side. So guys get the solo kill. 
And I, mean, I think, for the, obviously, for the start of the game, I think overall for DePaul University Academy, they were doing relatively okay in terms of some, some of their lanes. But all, now, obviously, with a couple of kills going the way of Mint Mongoose, this game can start kind of getting a little bit out of hand if they're not careful. Yeah, thankfully for them, though, they actually do get the grubs in that top side of the map. So at least they're denying some objectives from uh, the side of DePaul. But on the other side, the Paul as well are going to get the dragon. And I feel like, especially in the lane where we talked and talked in harp about how important it is to get Nabbits in a good position, that mountain means that some of these collapses are going to be very tough. Especially because, remember, it's a percentage. And that first one matters so much more than you think when it's just base damages coming in from the Vi or from the Jinx, who's only on a Noon Cover at the time. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Mountain Dragon is always going to be very beneficial. Uh, in terms of the amount of plays that you are able to make into it, it's just a small little bit of armor and more will always be in terms of like the extra little resistances that you do have at the current state of the game um but sky's the limit getting bullied once again still has no flash and well guess what no ultimate either and no life and no hp left in that pool and Lawi seems to not having seems to be not really yeah, having a good time i mean i, I was just looking at this and thinking a Sheen first into a Yorick that seems to be trapping you 24-7 and that doesn't seem to be a good idea and it's definitely paying itself not to be a good idea. Yeah, and this Yorick is obviously going to start getting a lot of gold here. Two turret plates off the back of that solo kill. Currently sitting at about a 1,000 gold. Basically the entire gold lead for the most part is going to be on this Yorick, uh, the current state of the game. And we saw the amount of pressure and just the amount of work that this champion was able to do in that last game. So then looking to do the exact same thing in game number three to pick up the series win for his team. Yeah, and I feel like if you're on the side of DePaul, you got to wonder where has Jackie been at that time of the game? Because you look at Dagger, he's four flashes out of the mid lane, he's four flashes out of the top lane, and he's even back here at bot to confirm that kill. They engage onto Exile, but it's just so easy for Exile to get that kill. And we were talking about the Jinx running rampant. Unfortunately for the Samira, she does not have the space to do that. Because what counters Samira is that crowd control. You got it in space. By Nautilus, they are enough. And the plate is found, and the lead is growing bigger and bigger. For the red side once again then they actually might even be going for a live here yeah i don't i don't think they had to really stop here as allow it does actually get a free flash for the full hp here and yep here's the hook yep and that's the line and the sinker coming in from magician flashes for the nautilus to keep themselves alive we're talking about jackie and being present finally there in the bot lane but maybe too little too late because the collapse is coming in another dredge line oh. but this time it will actually connect with the fake and Jackie lives on to fight another day. Level six, not hit just yet. But Jackie's pretty close. It's only one camp away. And I feel like that level six angle is maybe the place where if you're on the pole, you're looking for that level six and you're thinking, okay, we're gonna have those ultimates and we're gonna wombo combo our way back to victory. Yeah, I mean you definitely need to make sure that you do it. It's a Quick, sooner rather than later though because this i mean it's already five to zero very reminiscent of last game in particular where top lane's winning bot lane's winning mid lane is just going very even at the current state of the game and i mean i'm at this point in the game i'm thinking okay like the Paul university's got has to do something at some point to make their way back into this game and well they might do it soon enough that super mega death rocket was not in range but now the ultimates have come in. You got the shockwave from Hitmaster. Inferno trigger is available. The Magnus Storm is really the one piece that is missing from that connection. But you also look at the rail. Fairly early on in that level 5 curve. So it's going to be a while. So maybe a play on that top side of the map. But you're speaking on the top side of the map. And you're seeing just a whole lot of red there on the top side jungle. Yeah, exactly, but same can be said for the boss of the map for DePaul University Academy. This Jinx does to be a little bit careful here. It does have a shutdown. If they do recognize that Nautilus is not actually here on the bottom side of the map, this three-man dive can be so incredibly easy here onto Exile Magician, but I don't think they know exactly where Nautilus is. They're not really making any real attempt to make a play down here on the bottom side. Yeah, and well, that ha definitely has to be the point of contention, really, for the side of the Paul University Academy here is we're not really seeing them make plays and they're the team comp that's supposed to make those plays because yep. the other side naturally scales you got the asol and how many stacks of the passive is 65 already and remember 
You need 75 to get the Skies Descend, which is the upgraded version of the ultimate. Speaking of which, ultimate used by the Alawi, but the Leap of Faith might not be enough. The Maiden is sucking them in and losing face. We'll find another killing spree. This Yorick is dominant in this top side. Yeah, he's absolutely just taking over this series. Lose in peace. He's not doing a lot of losing. In fact, he's doing a lot of dominating up here on the top side, hitting tower plate after tower plate with the grublings as well. That's going to be six grublings picked up here. I'm sorry, well, void grubs, I guess I should say, uh, but the little grublings will be spawning up here. And this Alawi going to actually get zoned off this next wave as well. This Alawi is getting absolutely put in the dumpster. Jackie's going to have to do something eventually either to, re to low down just how dominant this Alawi is actually being or uh, to, pick, to, to pick up the pace of the game and start making some plays of his own. Yeah, I feel like Jackie is definitely being put between a rock and a hard place where you don't really want to go for top because, let's be honest, this Yorick is so far ahead. The Hull Breaker is already completed. So it's going to be very difficult to walk into that Yorick and not really be in a word of hurt. But on the opposite side as well, there's a Nautilus that is ready. Kryptonic has a TP, and there's an ultimate that is actually on dagger so season assist is present and the tps are present and there's flash and now even ghost onto exile magician and making a play just seems to be very difficult but maybe that infernal will be the missing piece in the puzzle where the upa is actually able to find a team fight there yeah i mean they i mean they have they have multiple ways of engaging but their engage yeah. opportunities definitely aren't unlimited here at the state of the game so but i mean sky's the limit i mean this is like that is very limited that is a very like, limited space i mean if this is solo queue that guy's like borderline inting but i mean here we go like we're going for a gauge well i mean they're definitely giving exiled the game that he wanted in nabbits despite that stellar game one now he's being put in the dumpster for the next game one more rocket but it's not enough the fight is continuing and the red side is getting all of that oh, bread Mira finally get him back in that's a big shutdown can they get the double exhaust is used to guarantee that kill it will go courtesy to jackie but that's the big fight that they've won yeah huge a couple kill oh actually just one kill going over samir but the first kill was a shutdown so a little bit of hope coming through for the polyverse academy but just complete domination here from mint mongoose and especially from lose in peace two top complete towers taken and the top side of the map of the 13 minutes Old Breaker obviously been completed for a while here, currently sitting on a solid 2,000 gold in inventory as well as Renee looking with Jackie onto Kryptonic. Ah, uh, that's a flash, but not even sure if that was necessary because there's no cyclone on Jackie and yeah. he can easily walk away from Renee. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely poor communication, not recognizing that the cyclone was used on the bottom side of the map there. So uh, not recognizing that, hey, that I don't actually have the flash here, but you know, so uh, the playing is safe rather than being sorry it does have a shutdown. So they didn't want to make it too big of a mistake. But yeah, I 100% agree. Definitely did not mean to flash in that current state of the game. But I mean, this game, this game is the last game all over again. I mean, Yorick completely dominating a side lane. Jinx is ahead of the AD carry. At least it's not 21 and 1. That's a bonus. But I mean, I mean three, 3 and 1 is still a very massive lead. Samira is sitting on Collector. So she is actually mm -hmm. a, the same item uh, breakpoint that Jinx is at the current state of the yeah. game. So that is a bonus, I would say, to the, how the game is currently mm -hmm. being played. But, I mean, this game is just looking grim once again. I mean, it's all a matter of silver linings. If you're an optimist, if you actually cheer for the Paul, you look at this as Nabitz is on a carry champion. Nabitz actually might be able to do something later on in the game and Inferno Trigger is one of the best ultimates that any AD carry can have to turn the fight around. But in that same vein, I see a whole lot of tools that can shut down that Samira. So it's all about finding the opportune timing, the timing that they actually might have found on the fly, but just as it goes in, it comes out. And guess what? You're not going to be the only one in that world of pain. That Wukong will be forced to flash away. And that's the great Magnus Storm interruption. Kryptonic oh, the is the one in danger. Jack, you just need to be careful not to be auto once. And then all of this is unable to reach. All of them do survive, but that's a lot of util use. That's a lot of abilities. That's a lot of summoners. And Renee could have walked a bit too far forward. But thankfully for them, no harm, no foul, no kills.
Yeah, nobody dies in that situation, but a lot of very low blinking health bars here. But Richard is still taken here by the York of all champions, who is just dominating the push up in the top side of the map. Krypton, who does need to be careful? That was almost gets killed there. Would have been a, a fairly a nice little gold injection there for the Oriana if that heal were to go over. But I mean, York with a tower in inventory. So that's how our herald in inventory almost is going to result in all the board of pain being true, true. Up here. I mean, I don't know if this allow can stop him. There's no way this allow can solve this push. This turret is down. There's also an aftershock just in case. And that turret is down, and Sky is put where Sky has been put all the game in the cage. Back oh. in the dumps, losing pieces, tanking that allow you by the way, and he still survives. It's still no problem. And remember. All Breaker is present. He also has a TM at a lot of damage, and he's tanky and healthy, but not tanky enough to stay in Hitmaster. And that's a big shutdown. 600 yeah. additional gold. Yeah, that's the big, Oriana. Yeah, it's a big shutdown, but when you invest that many resources to the top side, you don't have to just for, you just lose your mid tower for free. As Nabis tries to go a little bit aggressive here, but this is be a little bit careful. Death Charge is almost available here on the bottom side of the map. You just see mid play happening. Oh, Cyclone use their second take. That's the ultimate, but the shutdown is guaranteed. And Navis is trying to find an Inferno trigger, but he will be seized. He will be assisted. I mean, this is an all five and yeah, it's an all five and Aoi. It's TPing in, and yeah, exactly yeah. as he anticipated. Aoi yeah. doesn't really have a lot of cash potential, and even with that Iceborne, it really can't go anywhere. So that's what a five-minute cooldown now that is unleashed, or a four-minute cooldown rather. Yeah, I mean, if I, if I was um, mid Mongoose, I'd be like, hey, let's, this, let's kill this guy. What does this guy actually have to kill us at this current state <laughs> of the game? I mean, uh, but instead, it was able to get away kind of scot free there on that uh, side of the map. And you see York teeping into the bottom side of the map, looking to just take more structures here. Oriana, obviously, and Rel are towards the bottom side of the map, so can kind of help protect a lot, a little bit if needed, but. I mean, the more resources you keep kind of sending over here, the harder the game is going to be. Yeah, well, the game is very hard right now on the side of the paw. And look at this, losing pace again, doing that same play. There is no leap of faith, by the way. There's a lot of crack control, but losing pace just doesn't seem to care. He's thanking all of that damage. He's thanking those yeah, tentacles. Here's, here's and... Yep, and well, will it be enough? Vi is there, season assist available. Death Charge and Dredge Line are also present. Death Rocket nail in that coffin and that's yet another kill over extension here slightly from DePaul but can they get them back on the flank yes, they just have the way to engage they still have rail here losing peace though chunking out Navis well, can they find the other engage on the other side? Navis is trying to escape. Jackie as well is looking for that fight, and Navis actually uh, survived uh, uh, that one. That's going to be a kill. Again, giving away the Yorick walking in a step too far, but the dragon is going to breathe their fire onto Hitmaster, who will be head straight back towards that fountain. It's not as dominant as game number two, but it looks like the case will be the same. It's just a hand if, guys. Mint Mongols are built different in this series. Yeah, definitely uh, playing really well so far. Obviously, thinking about lots and lots of kills, but I mean, just the amount of pressure that losing Pete is generating here on the bottom side of the map is just insurmountable at the current state of the game. He is just like basically like at this point, he is drawing so many members to him that even if the fight doesn't go well, they're using so many resources on top of him that even when he ends under the tower to kill Samira. It still ends up working out for his team because everyone else has started to pick up some relative strength. Jinx now sitting on 5, 1, and 4 with the Hurricane, with the Kraken Slayer, Aurelian Soul as well. Two items. Like these guys are starting to really come online, and the gold just isn't there for the Paul University Academy. Obviously, a, a 8,500 gold lead here at the 19 minute marker for Mint Mongoose. I mean, it, it, the game isn't over, so at least that's good enough. You know, because around this time, 1940, the game game two was already over. So that's already improvement from the side of the Paul. The real question is, how much can they improve? Because it's the Baron that's up, and he can't really contest the Oryx. So the Oryx can shove top infinitely. Jinx already had that two item breakpoint. So the objective control and actually the Baron killing speed is no slouch here from the red team. Yeah, absolutely. Especially, especially when you have a Jinx on your team too. Like this guy, like absolutely murders the. The Baron Buff here as, as Jackie is kind of looking for a blue buff potential here. But 
might actually hop over the wall, but instead gonna kind of chill out a little bit here to recognize like, hey, uh, we have the <laughs> Rel actually somehow takes that. I don't know if they actually have vision of the wall because the control where I don't know if they just place that word or not, but Jackie looking, potentially considering, but they're down a lot of gold. I don't think they can take this fight. Yeah, and by the way, the Rel engage just canceled the Mung Wukong as well. Looking for that angle. That's a big shockwave and the follow-up is there. Can okay, they kill him? Navis? The answer is yes. That's one. Navis gets the second double kill for the carry. And it's just the Vi that's left strangling. But here comes the big boss. The Raid Dragon has arrived. Already found that kill. The skies do descend and it's not merciful. And they will reign. And it's all gone down. It's all gone dark. Kryptonic walks back into that fight and he instantly salvaged it back. Yeah, it was almost reminiscent of game number one where we saw an absolute crushing early game from Mint Mongoose, but a fight back potentially there from Depaul Virtual Academy. Big Shockwave bid, big Cyclone engage, followed up by the Samira engage, was able and enough to actually pick up the kill there on to Jinx and on to the York. The York is not known for being a team fighting champion, so obviously struggled at that current state of the game. So they're looking at the early pick on the kill there, but the atomic bomb being dropped by Kryptonic Killer and the rest of the members there of Mint Mongo is able to pick up the kills there and clean up the fight and keep the game in a winning position, no, sorry, not a winning, a dominating position for the side of uh, Mint Mongo's. Yeah, well, I mean, now the real question that you have to ask has to be, well, how long is it going to actually take Kryptonic to get another one of those uh, Sky Descents? Because it's still just the Falling Star for the moment. And I'm looking at it, and he seems to be already 19 stacks in. And as soon as they get another Sky Descent, then, yeah, team fights are going to be much more difficult. So there's a bit of timing that they can try to exploit. But that problem is, in that timing, is already going to be a barren taken. And, well, Mim Mongols are just making sure to utilize the best of the Oryx. You said it yourself. Not the best in team fighting, but definitely good enough to pressure lanes. Yeah, this guy, like, he just draws so much pressure. I mean, look, Lowey's down here, Oriana's down here, Wukong, Samira, they're all walking down here. And Baron Nasser just got slain, so losing peace can just walk away for free and not get punished. Instead, he's going to look to probably stay around. He's probably going to get punished here and most likely die. But the rest of his team is going to get so much off the back of it. Yeah, well, losing peace is going to be brought down. Well, Navis is going to find another kill, and this could be a rising problem, but it rises, it falls, oh, it dies, question mark. Hidden Master is actually going to get away with, oh, the buy is so low. They're all so low, but they can't get those kills. They need to clean them up. Jack is looking for the Cyclone. The angle is there, but the star has fallen on them, and Kryptonic has the damage to do all the work necessary. It's just a matter of timing. It's going to be too late to save the Nautilus, and that's going to be a problem, because now Kryptonic has no front line, and it's very minuscule victories, but they are victories nonetheless for the for the Paul. Yeah, a couple of kills going back, but still with the goal with the very natural being taken, plus the mid tower and the, and the tier two turret in the mid lane. All of a sudden, Goldie is now ballooned up to twelve thousand here at the twenty three minute marker. It is beginning worse and worse for the side of Paul University Academy. Mid is just doing a really good job of just pressuring, recognizing, hey, like we're really really strong right now. We need to use a lot of our pressure. Uh, obviously, York keeping into the boss side of the map, trying to apply as much pressure as he possibly can. They're looking to potentially apply a lot of pressure and end this game really soon. Yeah, and well, I mean, if you really just want to highlight the fact that the gold lead between the two respective top laners is double. It's 6,000 and 13,000 for this man in the frame. He has so much gold and he's actually able to hang two people on their own. And, and actually not just hang them, by the way. He was winning that 1v2 and now it's a 2v3. Backup has arrived and a death rocket from downtown and it's going to be enough. Novice is down. He's caught. Jinx is back. And this is exactly what we've seen in game number two. And they are fresh. They are clean. They are feeling minty in this game. It's another dominant one. This time, it took them a bit longer. Just 25 minutes. Three dragons and a very dominant Yorick. Lose in peace has guaranteed that victory. Seal is going to be for the Maiden. And it is going to be Mint Mongols to actually get themselves into sixth place.
Yeah, and we and we talked about obviously from from game one, even from game two and game three, Mitt Mongoose had an absolute dominating early game from that game. Made a couple of really uh, poor decisions in that game number one, allowed for the Paul University to come back in that game. And they could have very easily let that game kind of get to them with a, okay, you know, like, oh, I'm tilted. Like, we should have won. Like, kind of like bickering back and forth. But they stayed strong. They had a good mindset going into game two and game number three and absolutely dominated both games. Lose in peace completely 1v9 the early season of the game on New York two games in a row and Exile Magician followed up from his support and everyone else really set himself up for success and just dominated in the DPS category on the Jinx two games in a row as well. So congrats to Mitt Mongoose and picking up the series victory here. Yeah, well, the Mongoose definitely did impress me all throughout, but I feel like this is actually a time where you just have to be very careful because it's starting to get stressful. Playoffs is just around the corners, and now you're risking it very barely. That this might be it. The Paul dropping that series might actually drop them out of playoffs. So they need to fix whatever is going wrong pretty quick because there definitely are good signs in this team. You look at the team as a whole, and honestly, I look at Navis, I look at Headmaster. They've been doing great work. Even Renee, despite really not having the best of games. When they are allowed the space to move and make those plays, they were actually capable of making a difference. Yeah, I think for the Poly Bridge Academy, the one thing you can take away was obviously uh, laying faces like where they fell short, they fell really far behind, they really give themselves an opportunity to really kind of to make plays later on in the game. But once they were in position to make plays, that's where they had some really solid moments, like you said, with Renee, uh, with, with really everyone else, like really getting diving on top of and really kind of diving on top of people and setting up Nabbits for mm. success very, very well. So I think if they're able to kind of keep doing that and kind of keep building on that and potentially building up their solo and experience and their individual learning experiences, uh, I think this team could potentially be in the future a pretty solid team. But obviously right now they're, um they're on the edge of playoffs looking in they're not quite in yet they're gonna have to have a really solid performance next week and i have to have a little bit of help in order to make in the playoffs obviously as of right now but um definitely gonna have to look forward to potentially improving upon what they're already good at and kind of uh, squaring away some of their weaknesses yeah and you said it yourself well the week is over this is all we have for week number six of the protector league it was a very fun game honestly and with that, I, I think that Mince Mongoose might have actually stemmed themselves as a team that can be an underdog, that they can actually just deliver these upset games out of whim. And I'm very intrigued to see how they will fare in the playoffs. But, well, that's it for me, guys. I'm Volt. I was with Orion. And just before I actually give it to Orion to see it off, I want to give a big thanks to everybody who's tuned in for this series. And it's a bit a special shout-out for Matt, who's been helping us out here on production. And Orion, any final words for the evening? No, I think obviously we're one week away going into playoffs. So hopefully every team is kind of sharp, sharp, uh, sharpening up going into the playoffs and hope, hoping that it's going to be a exciting time. Obviously, at the top of the standings is fairly loaded, not uh, overloaded in terms of uh, a lot of teams are towards the top are uh, a lot of wins and not a lot of losses. So uh, towards the back end of the playoffs, it could be very exciting. Yeah, well, it seems it's already exciting indeed with that game. So. Let's hope for more exciting games all throughout the Asia's portfolio. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you all have a great evening. See you soon. Bye-bye.